Barrera and Naranda to get the jump on the Knights. No one else has been able to do that in this tournament. We've seen London start slow in this tournament. Patience starts for them, and we've seen the Huskies, as you said, Damian, start aggressively. We'll look for that in the first period. One game, one and done. One team's going to take it. Execution off the start. Who gets that first one, Jeff? Colby knows what this one feels like. The moment before puck drop, he was there in 2001. We're here in 2016 with the call, Sam Cosentino and RJ Broadhead. Ruan Norlanda in London each played over 90 games. They won over 70 times. Both have already captured their league championship. But it comes down to one game to complete the task set forth nine months ago. One of these teams will become the MasterCard Memorial Cup champions. The visiting team for the championship game are the Ruan Noranda Huskies, and their goalie is a good one playing in his last game of junior hockey. It's Chase Marchand from Upper Tintill in Nova Scotia. He had the best goals against in the QMJHL in the regular season. His numbers in the playoffs were minuscule. He set all kinds of QMJHL playoff records, and he allowed one goal on 37 shots in the semifinal. There's Tyler Parsons. He's draft eligible, 18-year-old from Chesterfield, Michigan. He has been the goalie of record in all 16 wins for the Knights, and one time in his last 10 games has he allowed more than two goals against. It's the Knights' offense that gets talked about, but they're very stingy defensively, too. The Ruan Noranda Huskies, number one ranked team in the Canadian Hockey League. The Knights were the number three ranked team. And we're underway. Winner of this one becomes the MasterCard Memorial Cup champions. London Knights quickly get it into the Huskies' hand. Huskies with their big line out there. Francis Perron, Jean-Christophe Baudin, Timo Meyer. Puck not right back into the Huskies' hand. That'll go on Marshawn, and he'll leave it there for Philip Myers. He's a Philadelphia prospect. He was a first-team All-Star defenseman in the QMJHL. And the Knights are giving him lots of time back there. Made that long pass to Timo Meyer. He tried to touch it over. Huskies are working hard just to keep this puck in. Perron from his knees. Poked it to Timo Meyer. Now Brandon Crawley making sure they can't get to the net that time. But Perron stolen it back for Ruan Noranda. Nicola Brouillard, the defenseman, spins and fires. Got it to the side of the net. Jacob Graves brought it to the corner. Knights just wrap it around, and that will come out to center ice. Here's Jacob Graves, overage defenseman. He's rugged. Barry Native. Warm-ups. Aaron Barisha, a fellow 20-year-old, was shooting pucks off his shin pads. He's known for his defense, but he's just turned the puck over. Now the Huskies are going to try to make something happen with the top line of the Knights on the ice. And here they come, a three-on-two developing. Pass behind Mitch Marner, but he got to it and then fired it wide. This will go all the way around, back out to center. Another Leafs prospect has it, Martin Zertals, and he tests Tyler Parsons. And no problem there for the Knights goalie. This gets to the line, it got outside. Parsons has plenty of time to play it. Huskies have to regroup. It's funny, Dale Hunter said to us yesterday, the first 10 minutes will probably be a feeling out period, and it looks very much that way here, at least through the first two minutes. Chris Martin had, he came in after he dumped the puck in. Not known for his points. That means Arab Borussia had to cover up for his defenseman. He's back there, Parsons tried to play. Julian Mantel, Avalanche prospect. He couldn't center the puck. Matthew Kitchuk to his right is Aaron Barisha. And 45 goals for Barisha. The overager tried the inside-outside move, but he didn't fool the rookie, Zachary Lozon. Antoine Wakeman, he's got a couple of points at this MasterCard Memorial Cup, both on the power play. And Max Jones comes barreling in. He takes a shot. Marchand got a piece of it. He got enough of it to keep it out. It Trickled through him, though. Fortin moves it over to an open side. Nobody there for the Huskies. Bank back to center ice. Aaron Barisha falls down. Second effort. Got it just as far as the Huskies' blue line. And Zachary Lozon takes a couple of hits as he dumps it in. Always takes a chance or two to get things going. And we've seen one here from London. I think teams are going to start to... Both teams start to settle into their games now. Quick pull, a burst of speed to the outside. He centered it. Huskies had all come back in front of their net. Now they're trying to turn and go the other way. But a good defensive play by Brandon Crowley. He poked it away from Perron. And the Knights are back on offense. 
C.J. Yakubovic, he's behind the net against Nikola Bruja. Yakubovic is a St. Louis prospect. Myers gets knocked down. Trying to get a shot is Pikinich. He fired, but it was off his stick and goes out of play. Well, both teams transitioning well. There's a lot of speed out in the ice. Look for this to be an up and down game at points. Max Jones comes in, curl and drag, but an excellent save by Marchand. He gets just enough of it, and then it deflects off the crossbar. We saw it yesterday. Same thing. Got a little piece off the glove, and then off the crossbar two nights ago in the game against Red Deer. So a bit of a scary touch here early on, but Marchand, he's like that. He's not always going to give you a clean look, but on most nights, it's an effective uh, style of play for him. Top line of the Knights back on the ice. They do have the last change. They're the home team after going 3-0 in the round robin. Huskies wound up going 2-2. Two two. That's including their semi-final victory over the Red Deer Rebels to punch their ticket to the championship game. Kachuk, he's got an arduous task just to move it ahead to Aiden Jamison. Following Jamison is Mitch Marner, but the Huskies, they've got him marked. He wasn't open. They take the puck. That is as far as their blue line, and it's Gabriel Fontaine who lost it to Ole Olevi. Mitch Marner quickly gets it ahead. Matthew Kachak getting it across the ice where Marner was coming in. Greer Dove to break that, break that up. Fontaine gathers it in for the Huskies, makes the smart, safe play, just gets it up high near the boards. Nothing up the middle with these knights out there. Kachak dumps it to the corner. Christian Dvorak hits with his man. Philip Myers able to move it forward, and Antoine Wakeit gets the center ice and dumps it into the night's end. And it's another shift in the books for the top line of the London Knights. So much hype, so much talk about them, but they haven't been able to generate anything in their first two shifts. So you can start crossing off the shifts if you're the Huskies. Take it shift by shift when they're out there. Keep them off the score sheet. Two down. And tell he spins and fires. Parsons had an aggressive play with a stick to knock it away, but it came hard off the glass. And now Max Jones, look at him fly. Jones in, and he's stopped by Marchand. Max Jones, what a burst of speed that was. And he tests the Huskies goaltender again. Oh, you have to be so careful. And Myers is an excellent skater in his own right. And he just gets caught flat-footed for that one little stumble right at the blue line. Forget it. Max Jones is gone. Shot like he was out of a cannon. Tries to go to the backhand. But Marchand has foiled him now twice in this game. And Jones creating using that great speed. You have to love the skill. You have to love the speed that these two hockey clubs bring to the table. And Marchand has had to be sharp here early on. It's been two Max Jones shots and he stopped them both. Jones is the only knight with a shot on goal. They've been tough saves. Jacob Nabu off the face off. It's up to center ice. That's behind the dangerous Timo Meyer, but he no, still no, got no. it and moved it into the night chain. He'll come in on the four check against Brandon Crawley. JJ Pikinich, he's a lead pick too. That's off a stick goes up high to the far blue line. Owen McDonald spins away from Lozar. Short pass to Yankimovic. And Pikinich was knocked down. He couldn't get to the puck. Graves is down there for the Knights and put it right through a maze of players. Crowley shot his block. Now Graves again will circle the net. His pass. Cross ice. Yankimovic was yelling. He had his stick in the air, but he couldn't shoot from that sharp angle. Huskies pick it up and they'll lift it up over everybody just to get the puck out. That's the captain Perron. That's the type of game he has. He's a responsible two-way player. And when he sees his defenseman reeling, he's back there to help the support. He ends up getting the clear that eventually leads to this Rouen line change. Jeremy Lozar ahead to A.J. Greer. Fontaine battling his way into the Knights end. Not a lot of room to work. Knights break it up. They get it to the blue line. Don't get it out, though. Greer wraps it around. Fontaine reaches for it. Zerkals, he's bumped by Dvorak, leaves it in the corner for Greer, but Yo Levy was with him, strike for Scrum. Zerkals to the blue line, out of the reach of Kara, and Marner will head back to try to make things difficult for the defense. And Lozon turns it over, it's in front of Kachuk, just like that, there's Dvorak with a chance, puck still loose. It doesn't take much for this line of the Knights to get a scoring chance. One little mistake, and boom, it's on net. And the Huskies tried to answer back, but they're offside. The Huskies and the Knights. It's the MasterCard Memorial Cup Championship game.
The 2016 MasterCard Memorial Cup on Sportsnet. Brought to you by MasterCard. Proud sponsor of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Greatness starts here. Right near the site for the 98th MasterCard Memorial Cup. Through and Miranda Huskies, QMJHL champs. They captured the President Cup, London Knights OHL champs. They lost Robertson trophy winners. And this is it. The winner. It's the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Played almost seven minutes of this first period. There's been a handful of shots on goal. Max Jones has been the guy that's been testing Chase Marchand. He's back out there, number 49. Michigan made it twice to center. There's Borussia from a sharp angle. The short side was covered by Marchand. And this is what makes the Knights dangerous. Everybody talks about the top line, but there's a little depth, too. Cliff Poo back to the blue line. Chris Martin then snaps a shot right on. That was a rebound. It was cleared quickly by Philip Myers before Jones could get to it. Knights with their second line out there, although there is a competition, though, which one is the second line? Jones centers it, tried to get it himself. Another centering attempt. Jones in the corner, takes a hit. Finally, the Huskies have it. In a long shift, they spent the pending. Parsons, new for Tang behind him, so he advanced the puck a bit. Who saw the hit? Banked it off the boards just to make sure that got near the Huskies line. All by himself is Antoine Wakeham. And Yakubovitz didn't let him make a play. J.J. Pikovic, he's got to be careful. That's Timo Meyer down there. Meyer tied for the points lead with seven on the Huskies. He's tied with his captain, Francis Paul. Paul's getting all the assists. Meyer's getting all the goals. And it's good for Francis to get on the board of the goal in that semifinal game against Red Deer. You know, he played well, but Joe Bouchard said we really need him to score. He's had a couple of good chances. Gets off the snide. That should give him confidence in this game. Hold on. Head to Perlar. There's a good move by the captain. He drops it off over to Meyer. Then goes to the front of the net. And Meyer has a great shot, but he couldn't get that one on target. Yakimovitz, he's down there with a sea of Huskies into the corner. Bodin able to advance it past him, and Yakimovitz has to be lined to the bench now to get a change. A.J. Greer, he was on a solo mission. Tried to dump it in, Knights intercept. Quickly up the center, it's double rank. Hands it to Crawford. Marchand comes out, he can't stop it behind his neck. Nicola Bouillard chips it ahead. Greer might get a chance here, he's coming in. Left wing side, Greer tried to pass. It was broken up, and then following up with Fontaine, but Parsons got there in time. Two on one, Knights, Dvorak, to Marner, back to Dvorak, back to Marner. Oh, and that just trickled wide. What passing by the Knights. They still have it in the Huskies' end. Y'all levy long shot, that's redirected right on. Magnificent save by Marchand. Gabriel Fontaine calms things down for the Huskies. Drops it off for Brouillard. It's caught by Parsons. That's more like it, gentlemen. This thing really starting to roll now, and these two teams are just so good with speed through the zone. You have to really respect them. London's done a nice job here at the blue line. On this particular occasion, Crawley, after making a good play at the line, dives back and takes a two-on-one away. And then here, Marta gets a golden opportunity and goes off the pad of Marchand and wide, and then Parsons has to come to the fore with a good glove save. Brouillard had stepped up as the trailer and took a good wrist shot. Both goalies really sharp here early on, and again for Marchand, it hasn't been exactly clean. There's puck slipping over him by him. He's getting pieces of him, but he's got the job done to this point. Face off in the night's end, and that's a win for Cliff Poole. Max Jones takes a quick peek over his shoulder, saw some pressure coming, didn't get it out. Ole Levy, the leading defenseman scorer at this MasterCard Memorial Cup. Marisha gets it over to Yolevi. He's got some skating room. Six points, all assists. Tried to center it. This will come right back out the center ice. And now Aiden Jamison backs off. Once his Knights get back on side, they look to be organized here as Jamison gets the feed through center. The defenseman had his stick lifted before he could shoot. Francis Perron. Right into the Knights' end. That was a healthy bounce. Didn't fool Parsons, though. 
Short pass to Martinet. Now Jamison. He's been out there a while. Might be thinking about getting to the bench for a change. And the puck's out. He's starting to make his way over there. And Victor Mete waiting to come on the ice. But Jamison can't get there. Huskies have it right bank in. Meyer doesn't shoot. Tried to center it. That was blocked by the six foot seven frame of Chris Martinet. Nice. Three of them over there trying to get that puck. They don't get it out though. Mantel right back down to the corner. Centering pass. Not to any Husky. So Caron comes up with it. Looks at the blue line that he vacated. Decides to keep the puck in deep. Timo Meyer now trying to get out of that corner so he could shoot. He passes to Fontaine. And there's Parsons. He helped his team out with that save. They were tired. And they'll have a commercial break to rest. It's the MasterCard Memorial Cup on Sportsnet. With Dale Hunter behind the London bench, coach, is this what you expected to see this early in the game? Yeah, it is. You know, they're both skilled teams and fast teams, and you can see the chances on the rush both ways. Uh, great passes by both teams, and you just got to execute and play a bit, bit sharper defensively. Are you what, surprised at the fact they're really trying to force you in your own zone? What's that? Yeah, yeah, so it's like one of those things where you got to get pucks out on the boards to be good. Thank you very much. Well, you know what? He is still a little relaxed, guys, because just before I did the interview, he wanted to know what the score of the ball game was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dale Hunter is on top of every yes, sport. Yes, he is. Every time we have a chat with him, he knows what's going on. It doesn't matter the sport. Of course, he's on top of hockey, but big baseball fan and anything that's going on. Who's injured, who got fired, who's playing well, who's not. No score. Championship game. MasterCard Memorial Cup. Huskies, they can't. Make something happen off this face-off. London gets it to the blue line. This will come out. A.J. Greer is skating well in this game. Had a chance to talk with Alexis Tau, who wound up winning the Scholastic Player of the Year in the CHL. He plays with Shawinigan. And that's who Ruan Miranda beat out in the President Cup final. And he said, you know, the Huskies just seem to have somebody step up every game, every series. It was A.J. Greer that got the Shawinigan Cataracts. And he made reference to the semifinal game where Chase Marchand was terrific against Red Deer. And he said, someone else will step up in the championship game. It just always happens for them. Yeah, and that's been the case. And, you know, they're missing Bruno Carl Denny on the back end. They're missing Matthew Boucher, who's an excellent speed PK type of guy. Yet you haven't heard anything from that about Joe Bouchard. He's excited. He's on the bench. That's about the most emotion you'll get out of him. And after 14 years in minor hockey, a couple years in CIS, here he is at the MasterCard Memorial Cup. J.J. Pickett, Shannon Caron battling for the puck. Pickett comes up with it. He's blocked along the boards, and the Huskies get it up. Here comes Francis Caron. Now the Huskies are catching up. He took a shot against the Myers, but it was bouncing, and Timo Myers didn't shoot. Caron left it behind the net. Graves comes up with it, makes a short pass. It's a good one to the center iceman, Owen McDonald. Brandon Crawley made the move at the blue line and put his teammates offside. You know, I looked at the starting lineup, and it was the Timo Meyer line, the top line for Ruan Miranda, up against the Owen McDonald line. You'd think you'd go with the Marner line to start, but Dale Hunter didn't want that. I think he wants McDonald, Yakimovich out there against Timo Meyer because they can feel they can throw him off this game. Doing that, playing physically against them, even at the end of the play, Meyer wants to get a little avenge, sticks his rear end out, but Owen McDonald was keen to what was going on, delivers a cross check. You'll see that matchup here most of the night to try and get Meyer off kilter. And London has an been top line heavy either to start this game. Getting all three lines going. And Aaron Barisha got a good chance. Alexander Fortin goes in front of his own net. He had good speed and he got it into the night end. He's right on the heels of Martinet. There's the pass over to Victor Mette. Mette's from Woodbridge. Passes to the left wing side. The defenseman carries on. He's such a good skater. Jones couldn't get him the puck in front of the net. Huskies don't get it out. Marisha has it now. And down low, it's Cliff Poo and Jacob Nabu. Poo dug it loose, but he couldn't tuck it on the short side. 
Antoine Wakett makes his way to set. Saw Martin Martinette in front of him. It was time for a change anyway, so he dumped it in. A good angle at the suit by Kachuk in the neutral zone. It forced the dump in as opposed to the pass in the middle of the ice. Christian Dvorak, he starts this rush into the Huskies' end. Banks it back to the blue line. Jamison doesn't shoot at the net. Kachuk was down low. Find the power in front. Yolevi was hovering around, and it's sent out for A.J. Greer can retrieve it. From a sharp angle, it's stopped by Parsons. Oh, a big hit down there. And a penalty coming up. Jamison took the hit. A boarding call coming up, and it's going to be the Knights going to the power play. And that's a dangerous proposition for Rouen Naranda. Well, Fontaine goes in, good speed. He's in on the four check. Jamison is there. Greer's got speed as he takes it to the net. And you'll see Fontaine come down right here. And it looks like a shoulder to shoulder check to me. The puck was definitely within the vicinity as Jamison had just barely had it off the stick. Nothing high to the head. Didn't look too dangerous to me at any way. Fontaine goes to the penalty box. This London power play in each of the three games it's played previously has led off with a power play, which has led to a power play goal, which has led to the lead. And Ruan Naranda will want to kill that trend with this pa uh, penalty kill. Nine for 20. The power play for the Knights at this Master Time Memorial Cup. The check is out there. Picking it. He was a 30-goal scorer. Dvorak back to the blue line to Yolevi. Yolevi, the lone defenseman. Dvorak. The check. Picking it. What a save, Marchand. And he covers it up. He has been on top of his game in this one. Well, it's that excellent puck movement. You really have to do a good job if you're in goal of tracking the puck, looking through screens, finding it. Kachuk is so dangerous down there. He has the option to take it to the net, but also get it to the slot. And picking it, he's got a dynamite release, a good shot. You see the space open up when everyone draws towards Kachuk. He dishes it off, and a great save there by Marchand. Takes off wing for Dvorak. Over 60% in the face-off circle during the season. Dvorak. Tried to get it back to the blue line. That didn't work. So now down to Kachuk. He put it in front of the net. And nobody could get it for the Knights. That'll give the penalty killers a bit of a reprieve. Pekinich. Drops it off as he gets inside the line. Kachuk leaves it for Yolevi. Marner's hovering around. Double act takes a look. There's Kachuk. Marner's got it and he missed the net on the one-timer. And it comes out. Knights are getting their chances. They've been off for five days. And they're off the mark a little bit. That's Marner. Two great chances in this game. And normally it's just easy finishes for him. But maybe the layoff has had an influence. Marner, there's a nice move. Gets it on the stick at the ball. He knew Marner was right behind him. Great pass to Kachuk. Tried to shoot, but it slid away from him. Then by the time he did, Huskies were in position. Kachuk. Spins with an old look pass. Dvorak reaches for it. Keeps it alive. Barisha couldn't shoot. Now Dvorak reaches and he can't get to it. First to speed from Brouillard. He's going up against Victor Mete. And look at the overage defenseman do his work down there. Brouillard trying to get to the front of the net. Parsons went to play. And had his stick down there and knocked it away from Brouillard. Power play winding down. Marner might get another chance. Waiting for some reinforcements. There's Dvorak. Rips this one around the boards. It'll come back to Graves. Crawley. There's Kachak. A quick pass. Dvorak couldn't one-time it. Huskies have killed it off. And now they've got a two-on-two. -two and Timo Meyer skating well. One hands it to the net. Following up is Fontaine straight out of the penalty box. Collage in to help out. There's some bodies back behind the Knights net. And they can't get anything to the net. Owen McDonald, he was doing a menace out there. He couldn't get things going into the Husky zone. Under four minutes to go in the first period. 0-0 zero, zero between the Knights and the Huskies. And the Knights did not score on their power play. They have outshot Ruan Miranda 10-6 in his opening period. And the majority of those 10 shots have been good scoring chances. Case Marchand has been the story again. Jeremy Ozar, second round pick of the Bruins. He is the fifth leading scorer in the QMJHL among defensemen. Parsons, he played it over to Mente, but Greer scored. 
Peter Abandonato, the rookie, leaves it for Greer, and his bank hand is wide. Blows on at the blue line. Can't shoot at the net, but keeps things alive by getting the puck in deep. This is Zertano's for 10, middle of the ice, and he just missed Blocker's side. Martin had steady defensive defenseman. He ensured that puck didn't bounce back in front of the Knights' net. Abandonado, he's tough to contain, spinning around, and finally the Knights have it out, and it's Pickenich. He'll be by himself as the Knights forwards want to change, so does J.J. Pickenich. That was a shift spent defending. Yeah, great, great shift there for the Rand Rand, the Huskies. Getting down low, cycling the puck, a couple of good exchanges, and two good shots directed towards the net. Ole Levy. Pass up to center ice. He saw Jones was there, but right on his back is Philip Myers. No time for Jones to work. Here's Cliff Poe using that great speed. Cuts to the front of it. Marchand the save. Puck was loose. The Huskies get it out from that crease area. Marchand's got no stick. Just getting to his feet now. Sticks back in his hand. Everything's A-OK -okay for the Rue and the Huskies. Myers sprints over to keep the puck here. This will go right around. Graves tried to keep the puck moving. He'll have a little bit of time now, so he lifts it up high. That'll go down to Myers at center ice. He's turned it over to Borussia. Jones following up, but they can't connect. Huskies. Bodan. He was tied for 16th in QMJHL scoring, but he hasn't managed a point at this Master Cup Memorial Cup. We know he's not 100%, and probably after the tournament, we'll find out how he was gutting it out to suit up for the Huskies in every game here. The Colorado prospect dealing with some upper body issues and kept him out of three of the five games in the President Cup final. Jeremy Lozon, an aggressive play to keep the puck here. That was the final, final minute and a half of the opening period. The championship game, MasterCard Memorial Cup. Gone over five minutes without a whistle. No goals. 0-0. Zero, zero. Championship game. Defensive. Not a surprise. You don't want to give up too many chances. Both of these teams so skilled. They can take advantage of those opportunities. Both goalies rock solid in the opening period. Drops it off for Zertaz. Zertaz has one goal at this MasterCard Memorial Cup. It's a game winner in the semifinal. Alexander Fortan can't pass it. Fontaine streaked over and got under 40 seconds to go in the period. Joe Levy just banks it out. Kachak. There's a good head fake. Matthew Kachak had 30 goals in his first OHL season. And he can stick broke on. He just left it down there. There's time here for the Huskies to make something happen. Get that late goal. Kachuk taps it back to Marner. There's also time for the Knights. Doesn't take them long. Marner comes in over the line, but there were four Huskies there to greet him. Under 10 seconds to go. Myers, he passes. Forte, Mantel. It's blocked by Victor Mete. Now up to center. Kachuk couldn't get that pass. And that's it. What a period. No goals, but lots of chances and tons of fast-paced action. The great skating Victor Mete got a reputation being for an offensive defenseman last year, but how about on this play? Look how he steps over and steps up so quickly to get the block on what was a dangerous chance, maybe the most dangerous of any of the chances Ryan Miranda had in the first. In their first three games of the MasterCard Memorial Cups, Knights had outscored their opponents 9-0 in the first period. Nothing, nothing here, Jeff. Had their chances, RJ, on the power play. Chase Marchand, by the way, 11 saves in that opening frame. He's been outstanding. A lot of this period played five on five, only the one power play for the London Knights, and some different styles we're seeing this afternoon, Yeah, yeah I think, uh, you know, in the first period, you see them establish their games. Uh, Ruin going with the dump and chase, cycling, uh, creating stuff off that, where, where, where London, obviously, with their puck possession and, and, and skill work, coming to the zone and, and trying to make plays happen that way. So, two different teams. Max Jones. What a fast game, and nobody's faster than Max Jones out there. He's playing with a lot of energy in the first period, and he should. He missed half the playoffs with a suspension, so here's a guy who came into this tournament with a chance to say, I want to play too, and you know, he's got that speed, that energy. Two chances so early that really would have put the, the Knights ahead. Beginning of the season, I spoke to one scout about Max Jones. He said, well, for London's benefit, we hope he gets his 10-game suspension out of the way early in the season, because inevitable that the physical player would take one. What do you see out there, Todd? Uh, the matchup, Old McDonald. So one thing the coaches said all week, 
Like, it's about what we do, not what they do. But one thing Dale Hunter's trying to do is get Ole McDonald against the Huskies' top line. We saw that. And the only shift we saw where the two head top lines went head-to-head, -head, there was chances at both ends. So I hope we see more of that tonight. That's fast hockey out there, guys. That it's is really fast good. hockey. It's quick and it's creative as well. Colby talked about the dumpage. We're seeing a lot of East-West play, as per usual, from the yeah, London Knights sure. this afternoon. But we are scoreless. So far, the netminders have been the stories. Chase Marchand, excellent. 11 saves. Tyler Parsons with six himself. Still to come this intermission, a reflection on Red Deer from the host of Rogers Hometown Hockey, Ron McClain. We're scoreless after 20. Scoreless after 20 minutes of play here in Red Deer. This year in Red Deer, MasterCard has supported the people of Fort McMurray through a campaign both in venue and across the country. Fans here in Red Deer have been showing their support for the Fort McMurray residents by signing a huge flag at each game, which will be sent to the city once residents return. So far, during the 2016 MasterCard Memorial Cup, MasterCard Canada, the CHL, and the Red Deer Host Organizing Committee have collectively raised over $168,000 to assist Fort McMurray residents affected by the tragic wildfires. You can still donate as well. Visit redcross.ca slash MasterCard. The next one is brought to you by Gatorade. Fuel better, perform better. played floor hockey at like an elementary school after school program. Begged my mom to put me into at least house league. She went on that ice and it was like a duck taking to water. So I tore my ACL and my MCL playing high school basketball. Sometimes be coming down the hallway out of the, the rehab place and, and you can see she'd been crying and near crying for the pain that she was in. I think my parents are a big reason why I'm still pushing so hard to get back. I just need to keep pushing and get back to where I was for them. Back, I came across an invitation, an invitation from Gatorade Canada. They were looking for a win from within, but because of your hard work, your dedication to overcome adversity, that you have been chosen. I love you. Come up and get your nomination ready. It's going to be an amazing opportunity and an amazing experience. Scoreless at the first intermission. You know, Red Deer has been such an outstanding host for the MasterCard Memorial Cup this year. Colby and I yesterday afternoon got to spend some time in Brian Sutter's farm. You know, all around town, people still talk about Ron McLean and his time in central Alberta. They think fondly of Ron, and as you'll see in this essay, the feeling is very much mutual. Red Deer. We call it the memorable city. I often wonder, what if I had come to know hockey someplace else? What if my coming of age in the sport was with someone as aimless as me? Blessedly, my dad's Air Force career brought us here in 1972. My first month at school, my fellow students and I were gathered in the gym at St. Thomas Aquinas, watching Canada versus the Soviet Union, game eight of the Summit Series. We shared with the rest of the country, if not the greatest, at least the most important victory in our sports history. Paul Henderson will tell you that winning the Memorial Cup 10 years earlier with the Hamilton Red Wings gave him the feeling he could accomplish something special in Russia. After the Summit Series, Al Furchuk, the Dean of Athletics at Red Deer College, went to Russia to study their program. He was amazed to find that they were using the teachings of a Canadian, Lloyd Percival. Percival's 1951 book, The Hockey Handbook, and his radio show influenced a generation of followers, including one Donald S. Cherry, who devoured the book, never missed a broadcast. Al Furchuk was a disciple of Percival. I used to sneak into the Red Deer Arena and watch Al run practices. He mixed Lloyd Percival's methods with the Russian approach. In 1988, he decided to stop coaching, so he hired a kid fresh out of McGill University in Montreal to coach the Kings. A kid who used to sneak into the Montreal form and watch Scotty Bowman run practices, Mike Babcock. Red Deer was like that, a wellspring of wisdom and opportunity. That was the academic part, but I would also need to understand courage, intensity, role playing. Well, in 1972, right after Henderson scored, I first laid eyes on Brian Sutter. I got to see all six Sutters play as they suited up for the Red Deer Junior A Rustlers. I witnessed the scars of the workplace. I learned about sacrifice. 
It's funny, Red Deer's first hockey hero was Oscar Asmundson, who won the Stanley Cup in 1933 with the New York Rangers. He drew a penalty against the Toronto Maple Leafs in the deciding game, and Kingston's Bill Cook scored the winning goal. A Red Deerian and a Kingstonian. A very Canadian coming together. The same mix as our little foxhole coach's corner. Don Cherry, a Memorial Cup champion himself with the Barry Flyers, and I are inspired for today. Here in the memorable city, we have the two teams still standing at the end of this eternal trench that leads straight from the heart into our past. Simply outstanding. Further to see in Brian Sutter that that was one of my highlights of the past couple of weeks here. Going to visit his farm yesterday, spent some time with Brenton Connie Sutter through cottage yesterday. What was your highlight from the past well, couple of these weeks? These guys might not get to talk. <laughs> 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 no, it's just coming back here. It's been a long time since I've been back here, seeing friendly faces, seeing the rink again, uh, seeing the fans embrace the city uh, that I experienced that when I was here, uh, and seeing my old team, the 2001 Memorial Cup team. Oh, geez, the, you know, the crowds, you know, you see the crowd here to come watch uh, anybody any other than the Red Deer Rebels. It's a special place. Uh, the, the live music, the fan uh, environment uh, right here in the arena and uh, and getting a ride shotgun with this guy and just see what it meant to these people here in Red Deer to have a champion back. Really cool. I mean, I always thought of it from a distance as Sutter country, but it's so much more than that. I mean, uh, Colby and I played some golf down in Innisfail. We yeah. were up in Sylvan Lake yesterday mm -hmm. and around there. The most polite people in Canada, I'm telling you, folks. Always somebody to open a door for you or always somebody to let you in in traffic, unlike you two. Yeah. <laughs> You're just surprised Come anyone's on. being polite to you in <laughs> general. <laughs> it was Twitter, great. real life, otherwise. Damon's had a great time. We all have. We all have our memories of Red Deer. Some more are being made this afternoon. Get set, young lady. And kids, second period is straight ahead. Scoreless. Here comes period number two. Back here at the NMAX Century, I'd like to welcome in everyone watching the Blue Jays game this afternoon. 5-3 loss at the hands of the Boston Red Sox. Second period here straight ahead. We're scoreless. Rob Falls with Jeremy Lozon. Jeremy, were there any surprises from what you saw from the London Knights in that first period? I don't think so. We were prepared to play against them, and we keep our uh, game plan, and that's what we did. And it's 0-0, so uh, we're still in the game. You know, they've got the advantage in shots right now. What do you want to do in this period? Just keep that down and chip the box and uh, work to, uh, to outshot them after. Thanks very much. Thank you. Jeremy Lozong, very important part of the Huskies defense. These two guys ready to go with the second period. Here's RJ Broadhead, Sam Cosentino. Shots in that first period were 11 to 6 in favor of the London Knights, but they didn't score a goal, and that's an accomplishment for the Huskies. Only one other period. At the MasterCard Memorial Cup, had the Knights been kept off the score sheet. So the Huskies, they thought if they could play five on five against the Knights, that it would be a better result than they had in the round robin. They did take one penalty, but the Knights' power play was not able to score. There we go. 40 minutes to decide the MasterCard Memorial Cup champion. Will it be the number one rank, Ruan Miranda Huskies? Or will it be the hottest team right now, the London Knights, coming into this one on a 16-game winning streak? And Matthew Kachuk saw that late hit coming and delivered the hit to Zerkals instead of taking it. Well, he took it off the skate, and that essentially put him offside. So Zerkals was going to arrive at about the same time as the puck. And once its whistle was blown, Kachuk says, no, you're not going to blow me up. I think I will repel you just the same way. And Zerkals, the Toronto Maple Leafs draft pick, goes down. Kachuk goes to the bench. And no further harm is exacted. There has been a clear game plan from the Huskies. They want to finish their checks on the top line of the London Knights. Here's Owen McDonald. Puts the puck down to the corner. C.J. Yankimovic, the Pennsylvania native, is pinned up against the boards by Myers. McDonald stole a puck, but he couldn't shoot. McDonald steals another puck. Can't shoot again. Got it to the front of the net. It's loose. Now he got a stick on it. The puck still loose. And Marchand had it covered long enough. 
to keep it under the referee's sight so he would blow the whistle. Well, this is really double jeopardy, and Todd talked about it at the intermission. This Owen McDonald line going up against Ruan Naranda's top line, so it's bad enough you already have them pinned in defensively, but you cannot make any mistakes. Bodan turns it over. That allows the sustained pressure in the zone. McDonald gets a second opportunity. A puck's taken off, him, and a third chance with the backhand. Marchand is able to follow it, track it, and make the save, but Owen McDonald did pay the price. A great shift there for that checking line. Knights had an edge in the face-offs in that opening period. They were 8-2. to two. There's a face-off win for the Huskies early in the second, so that may have been something they addressed. Julian Nantel was going back to try to negate the icing. He did not get there in time. RJ, you talked about this being foreign territory for Dale Hunter and the London Knights, and you look at what they've done in this tournament versus the Rebels. 13:51 in, then 4:35 against Brandon. 6:06. They've led almost this entire tournament, and they've never looked back. Yet has a team to make the London Knights feel uncomfortable by making them chase the game, by putting them behind. That just hasn't happened yet. Rouen can do that here. Off the face off, Barisha tried to shot. It was blocked by Wicked, and he's thinking offense immediately. Antoine Wicked wasn't given an inch by Chris Martinet, and Martinet still trying to stay with him. They're doing stops and starts along the boards. Wicked finally got it in deep. He centered the puck. Jones knocked it away from Perron. Cliff Poole falling up, but he can't get it past Perron on his initial try. Now Barisha back to Cliff Poole. Can't pull the trigger. That was Wicked coming back to tie up his stick. Who gets it again? Now he's bumped by Alan Perron. Behind the net. Jeremy Lozon hooks at the puck. Only Levy comes in to try to keep things down there for the Knights. Lozon steals in front of his own net. Saucers it up the middle. He saw Alexander Fortan there, but he couldn't touch it, and the Huskies have iced it again. Well, Fortan with that uh, great speed, and when it comes to Fortan, a guy who has really come into his own here. His uncle is J.S. Jaguar. He takes some power skating with some uh, junior players and NHL players during the offseason, and it's very evident that it's worked well for his game. Dvorak, Marner, Kachak on the ice now. Against Fortan, Wicked, Nantel. And a couple of those forwards are getting to the bench for the preferred matchup. They want Perron, Abandonado out against these guys. They got to get back in the play. Here comes the top line of the night. Dvorak, he's hit. Kachuk picks up that puck, and he's checked by Abandonado. Kachuk gets it back down low to Dvorak. He didn't have any room to work. That was Perron making sure that the dangerous Christian Dvorak couldn't center it. Mantel to Abandonado. The rookie comes in. He put it off the post. And the rebound cleared by Ole Olevic. Well, how about that? You try to make the top line defend, and it almost turned into a lead for the Huskies. London hasn't trailed a game since game three of the OHL final. That's almost three weeks ago. There's Kachuk behind the net. Passes to Mitch Martin. Graves backs off. Now he puts it back down. Walls to Chuck still down there. Trying to muscle Jacob Nabu away. Made a pass to Crowley. Lots of traffic in front. Huskies were able to knock that pass aside. A.J. Pickenich comes up with it for London. Crowley back to center. And it's right back in the Huskies' end. Jacob Graves, overage defenseman, makes the short pass. Pickenich at his time evaporates. Now a long pass. That is icing once again from the Huskies. Peter Abandonado has really become an emotional leader. We've seen him the last two nights uh, here when Ruan has played, yelling and screaming at his guys to get him motivated. Shows great speed here off the backhand. One extra move takes it to the shorthand side and rings it dead square off the post. Parsons got over, didn't leave much space. Abandonado had to be perfect, but he could only draw iron. Yakim Ovich, he can be bothersome to opponents. He was trying to get things to the front of the net. He was turned over. Sir Kells has the feet moving. Finally came back. He's stolen away from him. That's stolen by Meyer. And that's stopped by Parsons. But the rebound was there. Fontaine just missed. J.J. Pikinich, he takes his time. Now he'll lift it up high. Yakimovich knew the vicinity he was going to. Pikinich has it. Yakimovich going to the net. Philip Myers prevented him from getting that. Timo Myers standing still. Knights have banked off, so he sees lots of skating room. And now the Huskies stream into the Knights' end. That puck gets all the way down to Parsons, and he covers up. 
The Stanley Cup Final gets underway tomorrow as the San Jose Sharks head to Pittsburgh to take on the Penguins. It all gets underway at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on CBC and Rogers Game Center Live. With Sidney Crosby, who was last playing when the London Knights won the MasterCard Memorial Cup in 2005, then a member of the Ramuski Oceana couldn't get over the hump. The Knights ended up winning. And that was their first title under the Hunter regime. First and only. They're trying to add to it. Off the face off, Greer got a high shot. And now in the second period, it's the Huskies getting the better scoring chances. Bodan, then to the center at Parsons' zone's alert, got his stick on that. Victor Monte fetches it down in his own zone, but there's Huskies on both sides. He was relentless. Knights flip it up high. Goes on, knocks it down, spotted Wicked up at center ice. Parsons leads it for Victor Mente. He had no time to waste behind his net. Now he's pulling away from A.J. Greer. Mente with a full head of steam. Tried a shot, but Lozon was in a good spot. It went off in the wide. Here's Jeremy Lozon, fifth in defenseman scoring in the QMJHL. Second round pick of the Bruins, a physical presence. He started this Huskies charge up the ice. Oh, down. Leaves it in the corner for Greer. Now it's intercepted by the Knights. And here they come, led by Max Jones. One-on-one -on -one against Nicola Bruyard. Tough to beat the overage defenseman in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Aaron Barisha drops it off in the corner. Another penalty coming up. And again, it's going against the Huskies. Well, once Briard eliminated Jones from the play, he went down to the ice, and then Greer went over to support it even further. And as Greer went down, he took a shot at Jones. And Jones a little slow getting up from his position down on the end boards. And you can see he's taking a pretty good one in the chops. And Greer, we've seen be in the box on occasion before. There's Jones left side. Now, Briard takes him out. Greer comes over to help supporter at least dig the puck out. Once the puck's gone, however, it's that extra shot as Greer goes to the ice, throws it right in his face, not necessary whatsoever in a tight game like this. And you don't want to give the Knights foul plays. They had plenty of opportunities on their last one. Just didn't bear it. See if they're sharper this time. Ole Olevi. Here's Christian Dvorak. The touch to Pickett. Tried to one-time it. Olevi's right there. His shot is blocked by Fontaine. And it's down the ice. With a good block by Navu as well as he skates to the bench. He's been a warrior for the Rouen Miranda Huskies all tournament long and very rarely gets mentioned. Huskies had the second best penalty kill in the QMJHF. Here's Kachuk in the corner. Back to Yoletti at the blue line. Moves it over to the far side. He knew there'd be some support there. Pickenich let that one go. It got to the side of the net. Marchand thought he had it covered. It's still loose. Double right. Kachuk. In front to Pekinic, Huskies know that play's coming, they broke it up again. Christian Dvorak back to Kachuk, this time he got it to Pekinic, didn't get the shot through, a second pass at it, that just trickled wide. Pekinic wins that puck battle, so it stays in the Huskies end. Dvorak side, step goes off, it's back in front, and this will come outside the line, but it's the long change in the second period, and the Huskies aren't going to get many changed. Perron's exhausted, the bench was... Not jumping up right away. They tried to hit a bandanado off the bench. It was intercepted, and a good shot from Barisha is stopped by Marchand. Oh, boy, the action's starting to heat up with this London power play, and Ruen Miranda doing a great job collapsing in the middle of the ice. They're trying to use that side of the post with Kachuk down there and pop a couple of guys, low slot, high slot. It worked well there to get an opportunity, and then Barisha gets a good, clean look, but Marchand saw it all the way into the gloves. The whole act's been perfect in the face-off circle. And that one looked like a Huskies win, but it was a cheat by Abandonado. So in to take it now is Antoine Wakett. And this is won by Dvorak cleanly. Victor Mete onto the stick of Marner. They're not giving him much time to make a play. They're covering Mitch Marner. Dvorak. Took a check. Barisha trying to get open. Dvorak takes the pass. Mete at the blue line. There's Bonner. Now he looks. Took that no-look shot. He's so good at looking the opponents off. There's a great pass. And what a save. Marshan came over. And he robbed Aaron Barisha with another magnificent stop. 
Wow, Marchand, isn't that excellent work by the Rouen Miranda Huskies netminder. The goaltender of the year in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Kachuk thinks he's going to go to the long side instead. Comes out to the short side, and Barisha, what a chance he has. But Marchand really did a great job tracking that puck. He was just about to cheat off the post. Gets back quickly, covers it up. Great save by Marchand. He's locked in in this game. 14 seconds to go on the power play. There's a face-off win. Huskies are short-handed. They might get a chance here. Baudin in the corner. Myers to the fence, then goes to the front of the net. Mantel gets it at the blue line. He takes a low shot. That is just a little off the mark. Suddenly now over. Huskies have killed it off, but it wasn't easy. Knights came close again. Still 0-0. Huskies and Knights. The championship is on the line. C.J. Yakimovic, he got it down there. He knew McDonald was over there. Robert Thomas had Philip Myers step in front of him, and Yakimovic he lined it down there to bump Myers before he could clear. Thomas, the 16-year-old, he keeps it down low. Yakimovic, he's hot on the heels of Myers, finishes his check as expected from C.J. Yakimovic. Braves, he was able to prevent Greer from getting the pass. Here's Jacob Graves, waits, delays, it was perfect. Knights got back on side. Jones tried to stop and shoot. Huskies came back and defended well. There's the high pass. Fortan was down there. Knights knew it was coming and just banked it up. The Huskies, the President Cup champions in the QMJHL. First time in their franchise history on their 20th anniversary. Braves takes a look up. That's Timo Meyer out there, so he made sure to get it out. Uh, now Cliff Poole, he's been skating well as usual. He got in. There's Marchand. Another save. He just can't be beat right now. Knights are Pepper and Chase Marchand, but he's keeping them off the scoreboard. Jeremy Loza. Oh, Parsons answers back in the other end. There's a big glove save by Tyler Parsons. These goalies have been just awesome in the championship game. The 2016 MasterCard Memorial Cup on Sportsnet. Brought to you by MasterCard. Proud sponsor of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Greatness starts here. And by Boston Pizza. Get ready for game time with over 100 menu items. Order online for delivery. Boston Pizza will make you a fan. Behind the Huskies bench with Jill Bouchard. Coach, I've noticed how quickly you've been turning from defense to offense with your team. Yes, we did a good job uh, on transition. Uh, today it's very important against them. So we have a good good poise with the puck for the transition. So we have to make sure to keep going. And again, your goaltender is playing very well. Yeah, Chase uh, did a good job. So, uh, so far we have to be patient in the game and uh, respect the strict too. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Mike. He's been just a pleasure to talk to all this week. We've known him for a few years now, back when he was with UQTR at the University Cup, but such a, a positive person, and it rubs off on his team. Yeah, I said he changed his ways about three or four years ago. He used to be a bit of a hothead when he was coaching Midget AAA and said, that doesn't seem to work with today's kids, so I've changed my ways and he's become a much better coach as a result. Here's Matthew Kachuk with a steal. The ball acts on the right side. Martin's heading behind the net, but he can't come up with that puck. Martin Zertel takes a quick look, makes that high clearing. A.J. Greer has to wait for the puck to come off the boards. The ball act knocks him off of it. Victor Mette trying to get back. Zertel speeding in, stopped the shot, the rebound. Parsons came over and stopped that too. Now to on. his opportunity. Parsons is over there now. Oh, wow. Husky trying to get that first goal. What a lock pass this was. It was perfect. Those Marner and Kachuk, and they score. Marner throws it in front. Kachuk redirects. Makes lead. Wow, you want to talk about transition. How about the London Knights? Look at Tyler Parsons. He's been amazing in this tournament. Zerkaus takes a bullet off of him, and then he follows up his rebound. Can't get it to go, so back the other way. They flip it high in the air, and this is dangerous. As a defenseman, you don't know whether to rush and jump up or if the puck's going to bounce over you. And as soon as Marner gets 
gets it. He says, I know my line mate's going to the net. Kachuk beelines it to the net. He gets inside position on Lozon. And that is some depth, hand-eye coordination, excellent stick skills. And Dad loves it. Why wouldn't he? His son's team's up one nothing. Chip off the old block with a goal like that. Go to the front of the net, get a stick on it. Beautiful goal for Matthew Kachuk. And the Knights, they lead. Back defending, what a pass that was up in the air from DeVore. Here's Timo Meyer. He might be inspired by that goal. They get it right back. How about the Huskies? It's Perron that ties it. The London Knights absolutely deadly when they score first, but the Huskies say, you know what, we don't care. Look at the speed by Meyer through the zone. Now he goes to the backhand and uses his body to protect the puck, gets it to the front of the net. And Perron, inside position on Graves. Well, Perron goes hard to the net. The Ottawa prospect, we talked about it getting off the slide in the last game, giving him confidence, getting on the board with a goal. He goes right to the net, battles Graves. That's tough to do. Tucks it inside the post, and we're knotted at one. 11-game point streak for Francis Perron. Both he and Timo Meyer have a point in every game at this MasterCard Memorial Cup. On the flip side, Dvorak and Marner are now on 20-game point streaks. So the big players coming through in the big game. And we're back tied with the MasterCard Memorial Cup on the line. There's a giveaway. It's too high, though. Wicked gets it again in the corner. Joe Levy can't contain him. Able to go back to the blue line. Fortan back down to the corner. Julian named Carroll. That puck bounced on. Back at the blue line. It's kept in by Philip Myers. Behind the net, it's Fortan again. Takes a hit. Still has the puck. Goes cross ice. Bruyara shot. And it's Parsons catching it. Huskies with some momentum now. They didn't let the Knights enjoy their lead for long. It's back to being tied. Francis Perron led the QMJHL in playoff goals. Matthew Kachuk led the OHL in playoff goals. And look, the big goal scorers come through in the big game. Well, every coach talks about your best players have to be your best players in order to win. But how about this? to Dvorak and or to uh, Kachuk rather and he just deflects it in puck was about knee high and then Timo Meyer with great speed he cuts the net gets the backhand a little deflection off the defenseman stick goes to Perron Perron out battles Graves to the net and we're tied at one the captains getting in on the respective goals for their hockey clubs that lead for the Knights lasted 15 seconds nine and a half minutes to go in the second what a championship game this has been Playing at the NMAX Centrium in Red Deer, 98 MasterCard Memorial Cup. Knights, 16-game winning streak, including going 3-0 in the round robin, going straight to the final today. Huskies had a little more difficult route. They wound up 1-2, played in the semifinal, beat Red Deer, so a 2-2 two two record gets them here, and Fontaine is offside. Raising $100,000 for Fort McMurray. It's a goal that everyone can feel good about. Give today and MasterCard will match any donation made at redcross.ca slash MasterCard. How about the fans here? I mean, there's not a Western Hockey League team. The Red Deer Rebels were beat out. The Brandon Wheat Kings have long been gone. And this place is absolutely packed to come out and watch teams from the other two leagues battle for a national championship. you got to love it. What a great job, Red Deer. See that leaf sweater? Well, you got Mitch Marner, you got J.J. Pickett, you got Martin Zerkals, and you got some high-end draft-eligible players in this one, so there's a lot of Leaf fans paying attention. Oh, he's so good defensively back there for the Huskies, but Jones, a tough guy to contain. Jones trying to come out of the corner with a puck. Carr staying tight to him, and then he steps into Mette. Puck comes back behind the Huskies' net. Thanks, Carr. Wakeman standing still at his own blue line. Now it's some um, hard work to get to center ice, but he did. Joe Levy. Good cross ice pass. Aaron Barisha was hovering down there. 
Trying to spin away from Jeremy Lozon. Holding. He's got it into the ninth chair. Drops it back to Wake at that pass. Knocked down by Graves. Wake it in front. And he narrowly missed. There's a pass back to the blue line. It had some gusto on it. It was out of the reach of Jeremy Lozon. That gives the Knights a bit of a break. Here come the Huskies now. And how about the chance at the in-match centrum in Red Deer, Alberta? It's go Huskies, go. How do you figure that? When A.J. Greer said that his Rouen Miranda crowd was better than Red Deer's. There's a pass in front to Meyer. Perron's following up, and he's dancing around. Got it back in front to Meyer. The Knights just trying to tie up this big line for the Huskies. It's not easy to do. Crawley into the corner. He just inches away from Perron. Bounced the puck. A good bank pass now to Yakimovic, and he's past Meyer. And Meyer was forced to trip him up. Another penalty coming up to Rouen Noranda. Well, Timo Meyer was actually in perfect position. The pinching D, he covered up for him, and then Yakimovic has good speed. He's uh, underrated in that regard. He gets a step on Timo Meyer right here, and he's forced to trip him up while defending. And Meyer, the San Jose first rounder, once he started to extend himself, the only way he could catch up was with the stick, and he did so, and gets called for the tripping. And C.J. Yakimovic, St. Louis prospect. Bill Armstrong, their head scout, said when they drafted him, we love him because we think he's old school. Huskies get the puck down the ice off the faceoff. Knights are really going to have to take advantage of this power play. This is their third power play of the game. They're 0 for 2. Rowan Miranda hasn't had a power play yet. Yolani. That pass bounced away from Borisha. The Borat got to it. Got it over to Marner. That puck was slow getting there, so Marner just had to make a pass down to Borisha. Now it's Dvorak, calming things down for the Knights. The old Levy over to the open side. Dvorak, Marner there in close proximity. The check has it in the corner. Back to Marner. He has to circle the net. Your Levy shot. Marchand, he was over and let it hit him. Marner gets it again. Dvorak, new cross ice speed off a stick. It's bouncing around. Knights working hard to get it. Mauritius shielding it. He dumps it down towards the front of the net. That's Jeremy Lozon intercepting. And he moves it into the night's end. And uh, it's time to get those penalty killers changed for the Huskies. They got it done. The check sends it down low. Under a minute to go in the power play. Mauritius, he can't connect with Kachak. And now this is down the ice again. A good job uh, pressuring by the Ruin Miranda penalty kill. They're really not giving London much opportunity to set up and look for that back door. They're consistently pressuring the puck car carrier and they're taking away the top of the ice. Christian Dvorak to Chuck, right back to Marner, back to Kachuk. Can't shoot, Marner gets it, he fanned on it, and Nantel has stolen it. Take it right back by Pickenich. Marner shoots off the side of the net. McKay sits down there. Huskies aren't going to be denied. There's the reliable Nicola Bouillon. And he's thinking with offense now, too. The defenseman has it in his possession along the boards. Waited for Perron to get there. Short-handed. Huskies might get a chance. Only a couple of seconds to go in this ninth power play. And the Knights 0 for 3 with a man advantage. This penalty kill for the Huskies has been perfect. Perron. Lead on offense. Back to Meyer. There's a big save. Rebound gets to the foot of the net again. Parsons knocked that away. Tyler Parsons kicking the pad out and then knocking the puck away with his stick. McKay goes the other way. The Chuck. He's battling for it against Lozon. Marner's still out there, too. These nights have to be tired. Marner goes and gets it. Tries to get it down in front of the net. Zachary Lozon plays it along the boards. This will get out. Jacob Graves looks around. He's not going to be pressured here, so he has time to make a play, and he put it off the referee. Zertel is hit fake. Doesn't shoot. Has to circle the net, but he's got lots of speed. Zertel is back to the blue line now. McDonald trying to stay with him. Finally shoots, but it's off a stick. He goes harmlessly to the corner. Jones, cross ice, perfect pass in front for McDonald, and it's knocked away. Back in front of the Huskies net. There's Fontaine to get it out of there. Picks it up behind his goal. 
Now Myers reverses it back to Pillar. He's got some room on that side. Up at center, A.J. Greer was tapping his stick. That pass intercepted. It came back to Greer, though. Victor Mectain plays it off the glass. This will go down the ice. It won't be icing. Pillar retrieves it for the Huskies. Jeremy Lozon takes his time. At bank pass, it's a good one. Alexander Forte ahead to circle back. Now the Knights have taken it away. Two in the middle of the ice. He comes streaking in again. There's a shot and a save by Marchand. Two in the corner. He's hit by Lozon. Huskies have it again. They'll just bank it off the boards to get it out. Forte skating well. Jameson is aware that he was going to be close to that puck. He came over to help out his defense partner. Knights lift it up in the air again, and it works for them. There's Zakamovich with another shot on goal and another save for Marchand. Well, Chase Marchand has really been sharp in this game. Those last two trips down the ice, taking hard shots off the shoulder. He hasn't been faced. Huskies trying to go to work again. Our Bandanato. He gets it down behind the Knights net again. Under three minutes to go in the second period. Walking right in front of the net. The Huskies get a couple of cranks at it, and Carson stayed down low and blocked everything. He kept it out of his net. The Huskies and the Knights. It's been a tight block game. It's still 1-1. Brought to you by Cooper Tires. Cooper builds tires for the way real drivers really drive. Life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. How about the road for Mitch Marner? This is 15 years ago at the Malvern Arena in Toronto. That little skater is Mitchell Marner. He's got wheels and apparently knows how to drive the net, too. This was a feature they did on him at City Television in Toronto. And take a look now. He is the Sportsnet CHL Player of the Year. What a road, and this road may take him to the NHL and the Toronto Maple Leafs. RJ, Sam. Isn't it something if you can only tell the future? Little guy buzzing around out there. You never know how things are going to end up. And top player in the CHL this year. As his Knights in the MasterCard Memorial Cup championship game. He has an assist, too. This face off. Huskies wanted to get it to the net. J.J. Pickenich had other ideas. He'll send that in just to the side of the goal. Quickly after it is Matt Day. There's a shot from McDonald. It's off a stick and goes out of play. You know, you talk about Mitch Marner, uh, RJ. Dan Robson wrote a beautiful piece in Sportsnet.ca uh, about how last year he had five points in his first ten games. He took some time away from the team, went back with his skills coach, Rob DeVoe, got a reset, came back, and it led to him being selected fourth overall by the Toronto Maple Leafs. And from there, he has absolutely taken off. He's a star in the making. Here's Pickenich again. He's got a great shot. Blows on. He got in front of it and blocked it. A.J. Pickenich. He spins and made a pass in front of the net. Now it's Victor Mete's turn. Trying to go to the net. He's not down. He's still down in the crease. He'll have to get back. There come the Huskies now, led by their defenseman, Philip Myers. This is kept in by Perron. Myers is still down there. Dropped off the boat in. In front to Timo Myers. And Parsons makes another great save. Myers is down in front of the Knights net. And he is in a lot of pain. Yeah, Jill Bouchard's looking for a call. He got involved with uh, McDonald in the middle of the ice, and everyone was attracted to what Bodana Perron was doing, creating the shot on goal. And behind the play, McDonald gets hung up with Myers. Myers obviously gets the worst of it as he remains on the ice. And what an awesome story this guy is. He goes to camp with Philadelphia this year, ends up getting signed out of camp as a free agent. And it's nice to see him back up on his own power. And hopefully he won't be out for long. In the middle of your screen, you'll see Myers get hooked up with McDonald right there. And it's that left knee that gets spun around. He has the shot on goal right there. Oh, man. A knee on knee situation. No call was made, and this is tough to watch Myers walk down the alleyway. Hopefully he can return. He is one of the top defensemen, not just in the QMJHL, but all of the Canadian Hockey League. He was a first-team All-Star. And Joe Bouchard, that's a lot of valuable minutes. He's hoping it's not as bad as it initially looks. 
I'll be sure to keep you updated. Not much time to go in the second period. Nicola Brouillard. He's the center ice. Pops it in, Yolevi pokes it. Zerkow is waiting for the puck along the boards. He has it, trying to shot. Lots of traffic in front. Not cleared. Knights are diving, trying to get to it, but it's the Huskies who have it. Rear to the front of the net. There's another save for Parsons. It's loose. He had to make another one. Puck still loose. Parsons searching for it. Huskies will endless. And there's a penalty coming up. It was either going to be a goal or a penalty the way the Huskies were going, and they will get a power play as Graves is going to the penalty box. Wow, they're really pressing the net to Ruan Duran. The Huskies, the only issue here is they don't have a lot of real estate to work with, and so when you're in tight, it's tough to get the puck in an area you want it to go. Look at all these shots, all tight. Parsons is down, and while he's down, he does a good job protecting the lower part of the net. Then you have to try and get it by his body. Everyone hanging around the blue paint. It's just a circus down there. A mass of humanity, and finally, as Bouillard, the veteran defenseman, comes in, draws the penalty on Graves, and we get our first look at this Bruin Miranda Huskies power play. And it's a good power play. Six of their 13 goals at the MasterCard Memorial Cup have been scored with a man advantage. And keep your eye on number 20, Timo Meyer. He has three power play goals. Francis Paul. Passes over to Meyer. He tried to make a quick shot to the short side and put it on the side of the net. Perron keeps it in. Meyer, his pass goes right to Perron. Marner tried to get loose, but he can't get it away from the Huskies captain. It's a hard shot. It's up. Oh, it's bouncing around. It's stayed out. Parsons over. It's still down by the net. Parsons diving for it. Can't get a glove on it. It's still loose. Parsons reached again. Finally, the Knights have it. What a barrage. What an absolute barrage. And an excellent play by Perron to avoid Marner at the line. That got the puck down low, and it turned into another circus in front of Parsons. Under 20 seconds to go in the period. Look at Perron skating through the Knights. Now he heads back to the blue line. Maybe a change here for the Huskies. Meyer snaps a shot. That's wide of the goal. Perron at the blue line. They'll have to get it to the net quickly. Pass a pass for Timo Meyer. He wants to go back to the blue line. Wasn't much time. He tried to shoot. The buzzer goes. And the Huskies took it to the Knights in that second period. And they'll have a little power play time to continue that over into the third. Boy, look at the battle scars of these teams playing hard against one another. And it's Crawley who makes an outstanding play. A bullet of a shot off the shoulder. Crawley's down there. Bodan has it. Another good shot. And there's Crawley. Look at him defend. How hard in the stick. Wakeit can't get by him. And Parsons has to struggle to take this shot. It was sitting there on the doorstep. Meyer couldn't get it. Wakeit couldn't get it. And Parsons ends up the benefactor here. Oh, man, what a push by the Huskies. And what a championship game it is. The Master Card Memorial Cup is on the line. And this game is tied with a period to go, Jeff. And RJ, sometimes it's the simplest of comments. It really encapsulates the moment and makes it profound. As that scrum was happening in front of the London end on the Huskies power play, Colby Armstrong turns to me and says, Hockey. <laughs> How'd you like that? Colby Armstrong, That's Todd it. Warner, and Damian Cox. That was outstanding. And Todd, we're seeing some high-level play now for 40 minutes from both teams. The quality of play in this tournament is always good, but this year especially was good. And then in this game, it's been at another level. And sometimes you forget you're talking about junior hockey players. Desperation, the smart plays at the blue lines. You can see it's not lost on these kids, the importance of this game. And this first goal is a good ending. Watch Martin here, just a little slip play and then dump it on net. And Tachuk takes that in the air and redirects it over his shoulder. Really impressive stuff from both teams at both ends of the ice. Yeah, and, and that's just it at this age level. You know, the stage that they're on, both these teams, but the execution, the compete, the battle, the creativity in all aspects of the game, defensive zone, neutral zone, but I've been sitting up here, and all of us have been going, ooh, ah, this whole game, especially the second period, where it almost seemed like everything was happening, they respond right away with the goal and right back 
week in the game. So two of the best teams in the CHL, but man, has it been fun. It's a very hip hop pole reference there, by the way. Yeah. You, you brought up the point as well. That flip pass from Christian Devorah that goes down the ice, Marner and Kachuk, that looks like a set play, Damien. It does, because neither one of them is looking back, and it's, they know it's going to be a scramble, and they know it's a two on two scramble, and, they, and they're very good at the scrambles. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know we'd be talking about a goalie battle this deep yeah. into the game, but Damien, we have a goalie battle. Well, we talked about the goalie matchup. We didn't necessarily anticipate we'd have a goalie battle, but that's what we have on our hands between Tyler Parsons and Chase Marchand. Marchand early with some big saves on Max Jones, not letting London get out to that quick lead that they like to get into in the first period. And then as this game went on, as you saw late in that period, Tyler Parsons said, okay, Chase Marchand, what you're doing, I can do as well. I'm younger than you. This may be your last junior game and you want to win it, but this is my draft year and I want to show the rest of the hockey world I'm a pretty darn good goaltender. He was swimming, he was scrambling, he was diving, he was doing everything he needed to do. Parsons kept the puck out of the net. He's got 21 saves. Marchand's got 20 saves. It's a great goalie battle so far. You know, we've seen Ruan Aranda throughout this tournament get better and better. Todd, you were making that point as well. And you think of the psychological game as well. You know, after the first period, scoreless. Now it's one-to-one. -one. Can you almost feel the confidence building in the Huskies now? Sign of a good team to respond after after, you know, a mediocre first period and after the London goal. So good for them. This is, a, this is a good team. Improved as the tournament went on and shut the London Knights out in the first period. Gained some confidence from that. It looked really good in the second period. And the flow and feeling of a game. You know, one team scores first. The next team bounces right back. It almost seems like that one team won't go away. But this is the finals, man. It's, it's Everything is on the line. Like, this has been great hockey. For What's sure. the line again? Everything is happening. There you go. Bob Cole thinking <laughs> of you hockey. here. Red Deer. That one's good, too. You've had a couple of beauties so far. Goalie battle or not, we're tied at ones after 40 minutes of play. $100,000 for Fort McMurray. It's a goal that everyone can feel good about. Give today and MasterCard will match any donation made at redcross.ca slash MasterCard. Here in the second intermission, we are tied at once at Matthew Kachuk, Francis Perron. That's the story. We're all tied up at once here in the second intermission. Last night was a special one at the Sheridan Hotel. Rob Falls from Sportsnet hosting alongside Sebastian Goulet, our colleague from TVA. It was the annual CHL Awards Banquets. And front and center, Gilles Bouchard of the Rouen Naranda Huskies, he won the CHL Coach of the Year Award. Other award winners included, not exactly a surprise, Ivan Provorov, the Brandon Wheat Kings. He picks up the honors for Defenseman of the Year. And there's Sam Cosentino with a big handshake for the one and only Mitch Marner. He picks up the CHL Player of the Year. Other award winners included last night, these young men, Pierre-Luc Dubois, who wins the top prospect for this year's NHL Draft Award, top goal scorer, top point getter rather, that is Connor Garland of the Moncton Wildcats, Samuel Girard, Sportsman of the Year, funny moment too, uh, he was asked how he only managed to take a couple of a couple of penalties the entire season, he said, well, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know. I don't know. Will Petchening, <laughs> Humanitarian of the Year, Alexis Dau picks up the Scholastic Player of the Year, other award winners. Winners. We already showed you the Brian Kilray Coach of the Year Award, Jill Bouchard. Alex Nylander, he was in top with Matthew Phillips from Victoria, but he gets a nod. Carter Hart from Everett, goaltender of the year. You saw Provorov, you saw Mitch Marner as well. Does one of the two of these guys jump out for you, Colby Armstrong? Well, for me, for me Pierre-Luc Luc Dubois stands out for me, the prospect of the year. This kid is big. We saw him up there, his suit, his pants are so tight, he's going to need to get a new suit for the draft. But this guy what? cooked our goose at the prospects game, as you know, yeah. yes. your team He's one and he was outstanding at that game, but a big power forward. He's, he's a heck of a talent. I think that was Todd yeah. uh, coaching, Colby, no, coaching. Wasn't it? Yeah. coaching record, yeah. just for the record. Yeah. You know, yeah. Pierre Luc Dubois with Cape Breton as well. I mean, they played him with the two Russians for a large part of the season, split them up, and occasionally he played on the wing towards the latter half of the season. He played at center too. Damon, you're a big prospect guy. You wonder where he's going to end up. That's a yeah. great question. Is he a center? Is he a winger? I think teams that draft him are going to like his versatility. You got to believe, you know, we're watching Matthew Kachuk score a great goal out here. 
-hmm. It's him or Dubois, yeah. four, five, six. Someone's yeah. going to have a tough choice, plus Alex Nylander in that same uh, area of the draft And a as shout well. out to Will Peshnik, too, humanitarian yeah. of the year, who lost his dad, set up his own youth group in Saginaw. Good for you. Anyone jump out at you there? The well, Oilers I think the Carter team? Hart story is interesting. I, yeah. I mean, I'm always fascinated, by the way, uh, you know, these uh, the draft works for, for goaltenders now. One goalie went in the first draft, or in the first round last year. Ilya Samsonov went to the Washington Capitals. There's a lot of good goalies this year, but our team's looking at what's happening in the NHL and say, why would we draft one high? We don't know who the best goaltender is. It seems even harder to figure out these kids than forwards I and defensemen. I think the issue is size. Yeah. Most of the ones that are available early are as big as some of the goalies we're seeing in the NHL, and so some teams are nervous. Well, so. and, and Everybody if, wants the next Ben Bishop. Sure. Well, and, and if yeah. that's true, then you look at Evan Fitzpatrick and Sherbrooke and Carter Hart, who had a fantastic season with Everett. Yep. To your point, I mean, what's the barrier to entry now for goaltenders in the NHL? Six, six foot two, yeah, six know. foot three. Like, are we beginning to see the end of the small goaltender in the Well, in we're going to see. I mean, Tyler Parsons, we're watching tonight. He's not a, a, an overly large goalie, so he and Carter Hart are about the same. Yeah. We'll see in the draft what teams are thinking about goaltending. Congratulations to all the young men who picked up hardware yesterday. One big piece of hardware to hand out still in this year's CHL season. That's the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Third period, straight ahead. The 2016 MasterCard Memorial Cup on Sportsnet. Brought to you by MasterCard, proud sponsor of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Greatness starts here. And by Boston Pizza. Get ready for game time with over 100 menu items. Order online for delivery. Boston Pizza will make you a fan. This game has been fantastic. I know it's not the format, but can we please, David Branch, make this a best of seven? 1-1, one, one, heading to the third, Rob Falls with Matthew Kachuk. He got one of the two goals in that period. Not much room out there to work, is there? No, we you know they're a good team. You know, they're number one, you know, going into the playoff and you know, coming into this tournament. But, um, you know, I love our team. And, and if we play the 20 minutes that we're supposed to, um, you know, there's a reason why we've come this far. Got a little bit of work to do, too. You got a 49 seconds to kill. Yeah, um, you know, we believe in our penalty kill. And, you know, once we kill this off, you know, uh, we'll get back to work. Thanks very much. Well, he's one of the hardest workers on the London Knights, that young man, as the Knights go 1-1 after two. And the call of the third is R.J. Broadhead, Sam Cosentino. One period to decide the 2016 MasterCard Memorial Cup champions. And Jacob Graves is in the penalty box to start the third. The Rouen Miranda Huskies have 49 seconds on the power play. Late in that second period, they came close, had lots of chances with the man advantage, but Tyler Parsons was there to make the saves when needed, and the goalies have been great. Parsons and Chase Marchand. Mitch Marner's out at center ice. Knights are short-handed, but they've got Dvorak and Marner, and they are always dangerous. Dvorak tried a short side chance. Marchand, the way he's going, it's not going to go in from there. Timo Meyer dumps it in, takes a hit. Nice hurry after it. It's Dvorak back there. Didn't get a lot on the clear. Crowley tried to keep the puck moving. Didn't get it out. Class ice pass. Here's Dvorak again. It's poked away from him by Bouillon. Now Mete gets it behind his net. There's Crowley with a bit of time. Way up at center. Here's Mitch Marner. One on one against the forward. It's Perron back there. Right a quick shot. That was kicked aside by Marchand. The penalty to Graves is over. Pretty good play there by Perron. He didn't give away the inside of the ice and forced Marner to the outside. Not much Francis Perron can't do. There's a turnover behind the net. Sir Cowles tried to wrap it around and lost it just before he could get it to the net. Jones couldn't catch up to the puck. So the Huskies send it back into the night end. Parsons wants to move, but he saw Sir Cowles had some speed coming in. Then your levy got tangled up. Couldn't get the puck out. Jeremy Lowe's on. His shot. Stopped by Parsons. And he hangs on. Wow, to the middle of the ice they go, and opportunity for Lozon to get a good shot on goal, but again, Parsons, he just looks so comfortable back there. He takes it in the middle of his body. You see this lane open, wide open, but there's just enough space for him to track this puck, and good news for the Rouen Moran, the Huskies, is Philip Myers is back on the bench after leaving in a knee-on-knee -knee collision with Owen McDonald in the second. He didn't put any weight on that leg leaving the ice. They need him, though. Back to five on five. 
Knights 0 for 3 on the power play. We're in the land 0 for 1. Second straight year where the MasterCard Memorial Cup has been tied 1-1 after two periods. Last year, Oshawa beat Kelowna in overtime. Anthony Cirelli had the big goal. There's a pass in front from Yolevi. That just missed Barisha. Forte, he wants to wind things up. Barisha made him slow down. And then Donato, he couldn't get the pass. And now it's back into the neutral zone. It's touched with a glove, so that stops play. Julian Mantel, one of three Colorado prospects on this at Rouen Miranda Huskies team. And a guy, interestingly enough, that when he was drafted, they were worried about his skating, but that's not an issue now. And Chase Marchand, you know, Joey Perricone is the goalie coach here, and Chase Marchand admitted that it's been an up-and-down tournament for him. So yesterday, or Friday, when they came to the rink, they said, looked at some good video, wanted him to feel good about himself, be happy. Said a happy Chase Marchand is a good Chase Marchand. He's been great today. Shots fairly even. Huskies at 23. The Knights at 22. 1-1. This game. Championship game. 98th MasterCard Memorial Cup. Here come the Huskies now. Jean-Christophe Baudin. He leads the way. Waits for Meyer to get open. Timo Meyer tried to snap a shot. Bodies flying in front of the Knights bench. Here's four of them coming in over the line. It's a four-on-one. McDonald's. Absolutely terrific save from Chase Marchand. Wow, he read it like a book, and they're coming with speed. Tons of it. The London Knights, four of them up the middle of the ice, and it's McDonald who has the puck. He goes to the fourth option, and Marchand read it like a book. It's over there with that right pad. And how about at the end of the play, Perron bumps into his own man as he gets a rough ride there, and it gets bumped right there by Timo Meyer. And he was really slow going to the bench. There he is sitting there, which is a good sign. Along behind his net. That time evaporated quickly. The Borak is there. to Chuck digging for it. Marner wants to get it, and now he has it. He spots the Borak. That shot's blocked by Caron. It comes back to the blue line. Graves. He missed the Borak. His intended target with the pass. And that allows Martin Zerkals to come into the night zone. Tried to stick handle through all those nights. Huskies kept it in. Pass hard in front of the net. That's off the skate. And in the bank pass to Kachuk. It's out of his reach. Marner can't get there in time to keep it in. It's out of play anyway. Well, that's one thing the Ruin Miranda Huskies have done a pretty good job at. Marner, uh, Dvorak, and Kachuk did not allow them to handle the puck for long periods of time. And one thing to take away the time and space and play physical on that group, but it's another thing to completely put them out of their rhythm, to force them to make plays before they want to make plays. And, you know, the one time you let your pedal off the metal, what happens? They end up scoring a goal. But other than that, Ruin Miranda's done a great job on that top line. The crew, Julian Nantel on this face off. Everything's a battle now. Nantel barrels into Borussia along the board. Down the blue trying to control for the Huskies. They'll get it out. Led by Alexander Fortin. He tried to bounce it in front of the net. Parsons knows these boards in Red Deer now. He shoveled it back to the corner. Fortin's behind the net. And he's got some time. Back to Nadu. Now he's worked his way down to the corner. Can't shoot from there, so he gets out of it. Right back down low, Wakeit, he's bumped by Chris Martinet. Wakeit still has the puck, trying to go to the front of the net. He spins to his forehand, but he couldn't get it on goal. Both hands checked, here's Nantel following up. Huskies taking the play to the Knights right now. Behind the net is Fortin, working his way to the front. Knights don't let that happen. Wakeit, he's checked by Martinet. He makes a pass behind his own goal to Aiden Jamison. That's off the boards, down the ice, it's icing. The Bronx Bombers invade Rogers Center for a great game set against Toronto. So the Blue Jays and the Yankees. Jacoby Ellsbury and his Yankees take on Jose Batista and the Blue Jays Monday on Sportsnet and Sportsnet 4K. Good chance here for Ruin Miranda, and go figures that Dale Hunter calls the timeout here. I mean, he's feeling the pressure. Still 15 minutes, 49 seconds left in this third period, but Dale Hunter says, you know what? We can't take a chance here. Those guys had to defend. There was a lot of cycle going on. Ruin Miranda had great pressure, and that's one thing. You're not necessarily getting all those shots to the net, but the zone time is really effective, and it forces the Knights to use their timeout and to burn it here with plenty of time left in this third period. 
Last time the Knights were in our MasterCard Memorial Cup Championship game was 2012. That was in Shawinigan. And they were also tied at one after two periods. Similar type teams. You had one goalie, Michael Hauser, back then. You had the young and the old, the draft eligible guys. When you go back to Horvat and Domi, and then you had your older veterans like the Austin Watsons. And same here. You've got Kachuk, you've got Jones as your younger guys, you've got Marner, Dvorak as your older guys. A very similar team to the 2012 London Knights squad. You'll notice it's a different group of Knights out there. You can change on a timeout on an ice in the. Canadian Hockey League. A little different role than in the NHL. Huskies control off the face off though. Meyer tried a shot on goal. It was blocked by Dvorak and then lifted it up high again. That play has given the Huskies some fits. And it's the Huskies icing at this time. And they're saying that yes, you can indeed change. And Joe Bouchard, very calm on the bench. He's got a real quiet, calm demeanor about him. And talked about his experience to 2013 when he won the Queen's Cup with UQTR. And then last year, winning the under 17s, working with Scott Walker behind the bench as two huge moments to help prepare him for what the MasterCard Memorial Cup was going to offer him. And he's handled his team extremely well, getting that first win out of the way and then building with their game ever since. Off the face off, there's Marner with a shot, but the Husky. Blocking. Now the Huskies just lift it up to get it out. Ole Levy calmly gets it over to Jacob Gray. Now it's Kitchen. Marner had to take it in his skates. He's got those good feet. Decided to kick it in. The Chuck chased after it. So did Dvorak. Yolevi able to keep it in. Now it's Dvorak. Tried to shoot. Yolevi gets it again. He spotted Kitchen. Now that's through by Graves. Knights just aren't getting their sticks on those pucks in the scoring positions. Marner, he couldn't get past three Huskies with the puck. And Roland Miranda didn't get it deep in the Knights end. Graves waits for everyone to get on side. Now here come the Knights. Meyer, he's trying to get it past the ball act. Now it's Sir Cal's turn to get this out. Meyer's back there to help out. Two on two. He's got Fontaine with him. And Timo Meyer couldn't stay on side. Now you look at Gabriel Fontaine, an interesting story. He grew up in Sherbrooke, was playing for the Sherbrooke Phoenix. Well, this summer they traded for him and what is being called one of the coups of this uh, Jill Bouchard GM routine. They pick him up and he says, Jill Bouchard really worked with me. It was difficult playing at home. There was a lot of pressure. I get over to Ruan and Miranda. Some of that is taken away. He noticed my body language wasn't particularly well and turned him into a fine player. A guy I think he's going to get drafted here in his second goal run. J.J. Pekinich. Kalam makes him circle the net. Taking it, she's pass. That's back to midday. He gets the feet moving to make sure it stays here. McDonald's behind the goal. He's been with the night since he's been a 16-year-old. Now he's 19. Yakimovic leaves it for Mente. Kalam bumps him along the board. Yakimovic at the blue line. He's got a little bit of time, so he creeps a little closer to the net. Just kept it down low. McDonald goes to work again. Owen McDonald back to the corner where Yakimovic now is. Pickenich, he bumps with Timo Meyer, gets to the puck first. J.J. Pickenich to McDonald, big blocker saved by Marshan. Pause back on the ice, here's a bandanado at center. Loses the handle as he gets to the blue line. Uh, rookie has Matt Day to deal with now, and the Knights defenseman took it away. Brandon Crawley to center ice. Sends off the glass and a wrap around. Marisha tried to knock it down. Four ten. Slides it over to Van Tell. Three Huskies come in over the line. Four of them now. Lozon's joined. And now Joel Lozon has it behind the net. Here's Wakett. He might get a lane to shoot. He tried a shot. Gets his own rebound. It's off the post. Oh, that was close. Off the post and the Knights get it. Sent into the Ruan Norander zone, but it was on the Knights side of center. They've iced it. And the Huskies can't believe they don't have the lead. Antoine Wake came right in front, and he came that close. It's been a terrific championship game at the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Ruan Naranda, London here in the third period, still tied at one. And Sam, it's not often the number one ranked team in the CHL comes in as the underdogs. But the way the Knights have been playing, 16-game winning streak, they did come in as the team that had to play the best to beat the top team right now. Well, it's pretty crazy. You go back to the Owen Sound series, they won that 4-2. But since that time, April 1st, there was one week left in the regular season. The price of bread was about 
20 cents. Danny Willett was a week away from winning the Masters, and the Blue Jays were still in spring training in Montreal. So it's been that long since the London Knights' last loss, and tied here in the third period. Who knows what will happen? 13 minutes to go in the third. Mitch Marner's on the ice with Christian Dvorak and Matthew Kachuk. A.J. Greer confidently comes back in his own zone. Yo, Levy had fallen down. He was quick to get up. Still trying to get into the play. Bro, yeah, with a hard shot. Got it a little too high. Sir Cowell banks off. Plays it off the boards. Fontaine reaches for it. Greer's there to help out. And now the Knights have. Yo, Levy looking for that stretch pass. The ball act was up there, but the Huskies weren't going to let him get it through. To check, catch to the net. This is to Chase Marchand, and he covers up some good puck handling from Matthew Kitchuk. Nicola Villard is the one defending against him after he took a slap shot that missed the net. Now he's forced to go one on one against Matthew Kachuk. Actually, it's Neveu, his partner. You'll see that Fontaine misses the check, a little outside in move. Kachuk takes it to the net, runs out of real estate, but still the puck was sitting there before Marchand was able to get it. Knights come close again. Nice face off controlled by the Huskies. There's a nervous buzz here at the end, Max Sinclair. The Huskies knew they had to play their best. They are, so is London. And that's turned into a fantastic game. J.J. Pickenick. Good pass intercepted by Alan Cohen. Another good defensive play. And Cohen, known for his defense, had 11 goals in the regular season. He's gone to the front of the net. Puck bounced off the end boards. Now Cohen, the defensive specialist, is caught. The Huskies have some support back there. There's two forwards as Victor Mente comes in. Behind the net, he's double teamed. Nolan McDonald going to the front. He couldn't pull the trigger. Alan Barisha. He worked hard to try to track that puck down, but he couldn't take control. And now the Knights have to back up. Jones, come on! Back at center ice. Max Jones. Max a shot. That's too hot. But two off the bench. He's able to keep it in. Now Barisha. He's still out there. Gets it toward the front of the net. That's picked up quickly by Rosanna. Advanced along the boards, but Chris Poo stepped in front of him. Julian Nantel has to circle back, trying to find some open ice to get this puck out. He's able to lift it up high. That gets a few feet outside the blue line, and Jones sends it right back in. There's some Huskies that would like to get a change in. Jones trying to knock it away from Fortan, and he's forced him behind his neck. Goes on. He tries that flip play. And this will work a little better for the Huskies. Fortan is still skating well. Oh! Gabriel Fortin, watch, he is being bothered, but he gets back into his own zone, gives up the puck, the flip pass ends up on his tape. Now because of his speed, he creates a big gap there. Sends it to Nantel in front of the net, who's got great speed in his own line, and he does a great job, Nantel. You can see it from the ref camp, just hanging back, waiting for that pass. Fortin back in pass, Nantel upstairs, and the Huskies are on top. Julian Nantel, his second goal, his second point of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. He scored in game two against Red Deer. This, a much bigger goal. And the Huskies lead the London Knights with just over ten and a half minutes to go in the third. Well, you look at uh, Gabriel Fortan, and this is uh, unbelievable what he's able to do here. He's just being bothered, bothered. So he says, you know what, I'm going to circle back in my own zone. He's still skating. He's still got the feet moving. He gives it up, the flick pass. And now he skates under it with great speed at center ice. This extra burst of speed by Jameson forces Jameson to go down. That opens up the passing lane and then tell with great finish. Knights trail for the first time since May the 9th. Almost three weeks. Now can the Huskies close this one out? There is a lot of time to go. This is not icing, so Marchand leaves it behind his neck. Marner's on the ice, so is Dvorak and Kachak. Expect to see this top line of the Knights a lot here down the stretch. And this is going to be a penalty. It was knocked out of midair and knocked over the glass. It's a delay game for the Huskies. 
And Greer will go after the 410 goal, gives them the lead for the 410 assist. Gives them the lead on the Nantel goal. You'll see Greer right here. He just whacks it out of midair. He's just trying to knock that puck around. And everyone talks about this penalty being an issue in the National Hockey League, but it's Greer who will suffer the loss here. Huskies off the face off. Okay, so far so good for them on the penalty kick. They have been so good killing the Knights power players in this game. Knights over three. They came in nine for 20, almost 50% on the power play. But this is when they need one. Marisha behind the net. He's held there by Nabu. Dvorak moves it around. Back to the blue line, Marner. He quickly gets it back to Dvorak. The tuck in front. Marisha the shot. Marsh Chan, another great save. And it's cleared by the Huskies. Marisha at center ice. Gets it back on the stick of Yoletti. Marisha has it again, looking for a lane to shoot. Now he's forced to circle back. Yoletti. The finishing port made a pass. Tom blocks that. Yolevi gets it back. Now it's down for Kachuk. He leaves it for Marner. Poked away from him. Huskies are getting to these pucks first. Not letting the Knights set up. And Nabu will come up with it in the corner with a chance to clear. And he's successful. Well, the fans here have really taken to the Rouen Miranda Huskies. And we talked about A.J. Greer being the number one enemy in the semi on Friday. Well, they've taken a liking to them now. Christian Devorak drops it off for Kachuk. Leaves it for Mete. Mete forced to go wide. His pass went past everybody. Now the Knights are going to have to get back. Mete is such a good skater. He's the one that passed the puck. And he was the first one back. How about his speed? There might be another penalty coming up to Ruan Miranda. There is. And then Marner's knocked down at center. Huskies in. No hurry here. Finally, they touch the puck. The whistle goes. Fontaine will end up going to the box here. Marner was in trouble, too. Farrar is going over to speak with the officials. Fontaine just got inside the line, and he was banging around right at the door of the London Knights bench. He and Mete were there. Now he comes back right here, and you'll see him as he's going to the bench. He gets the stick right up into the face of Kachuk. And Fontaine goes to the box, and I think the referees are discussing something that might have happened with Mitch Marner in the middle of the ice as well. He was down at the end of the play. Fontaine, he's going in now. Still 12 seconds to go in the penalty to A.J. Greer, too. Well, this is going to be all kinds of difficulty here for the Rouen Miranda Huskies. And, you know, the one good thing here is they've been able to rest their top players while this thing has been able to get sorted out. So you don't have to worry about the timeout, at least right now, for Joe Bouchard. Also rests London's top players, too, who had been out there for the whole power play. They're still out there. So 12 seconds, five on three. Knights trailing by one. And just over eight minutes to go in the third. Face-off scrummed, and it's won by Jean-Christophe Baudin. He got it down the ice. That is a big face-off win. That will about do it for the two-man advantage. We're jumping off. Now he's on the ice. And he had the puck for a moment. Desperation, he gets it back, and that forces the Knights to start again. Good hustle by Greer. He knew exactly what he was doing. Got it down the ice, got off for Wakey to get out there. He's got good speed, and he's been good on the PK. Mitch Marner is the one who will bring it into the Huskies. In. Drops it off for Berisha. Berisha down to the corner. Double access, so he leaves the puck for him. check to the blue line. Marner, now it's over to Mente. In front, Kachuk couldn't pull the trigger. The puck's sitting there, and the Huskies get enough on it to get it outside the line. Dvorak comes in again. Just over a minute to go on the power play. What a move by Dvorak! And then he's stopped by the last line of the face, Case Marchand. Huskies bouncing puck. Can't get it out. There's a shot from Marner. It's off a stick and floats up high and goes out of play. 
Wow, Christian Dvorak, Arizona second round pick, hurt during his draft year. Arizona got him as a steal. He comes in across the line, makes a move on Nevoa, has got his feet pointed north, comes back the other way and takes it to the net. Has to dive just to get some wood on at the last second, but Marchand did a good job tracking him to the far post. 53 seconds to go in the power play now for the Knights. They're 0 for 4. So much talk about this power play. Don't take penalties against London. Huskies have taken a lot more than the London Knights have. There might be something here, too. Picking a Chimbriard going after one another. Picking it, you left Boston University to join the London Knights. Bruyard's a longtime veteran. Knows what it's all about to get these opportunities. He didn't like the hit from Picking it, so he decided to hold on to his leg, and Picking it just kept jabbing at him to get him to let go of his stick. And you look at Bruyard last year with the Quebec Ramparts and the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. They were the host of the MasterCard Memorial Cup last year. He gets another opportunity this year in his last go around, and he has left it all out on the ice for the Huskies in this one. You look at those defenseman scores over the last few years. Bruyard second this year. He won the defenseman the year before that. Last four years, he's been no worse than third in defenseman scoring in the QMJHL. He's in the penalty box now. Under 40 seconds to go on the night's power play. Under seven minutes to go in the third. Huskies lead two to one. Dvorak, a nice move to get inside the Husky zone. High nice shot on Marchand. He stopped it and his defense cleared it. Jacob Nabu, he's an underrated hero back there for the Huskies. Henry Killer blocks shots, gets to those rebounds. Down the ice again, Kong gets it done this time. And now this power play almost done. Huskies get it again, and that should be enough. Volley goes back. Parsons letting all his teammates know that the penalty is almost over, and it is now. Marner still has the puck. He gets it over to Kitschak. That's turned over. And Timo Meyer pokes it out, but he can't get to it before Graves. Jeremy Loza leaves it for Meyer, and now he's got some room to come into the night's end. Meyer circling the goal. Leaves it there for Fortang. Graves swats it away, but didn't get it past the blue line. This is lofted down toward the net. Fortang was down there. And Carson stopped it and didn't allow a loose puck for Fortan. The Huskies lead in the third. This is the prize. It's the MasterCard Memorial Cup. And through the years, the teams that have won it realize how hard it is to celebrate that victory. The work ethic has to be at another level. The desire, the want, the will all has to be there. And maybe in six minutes, one of these two teams will be the next MasterCard Memorial Cup champion. It's pressure time now. 5.53 on the clock. Championship game, London Knights. Come into this one on a 16-game winning streak. Haven't lost since April the 1st. The Huskies, number one ranked team in the Canadian Hockey League, have the lead. One goal lead is not comfortable against these Knights, though. Goes on going back, gets it away from Jones. Now Fontaine up to center now. The Huskies trying to make something happen. They get it in the Knights end. Brave circles back, but the Huskies aren't going to pressure. They want to make sure they've got support back in their own zone. They don't want to give the Knights an odd man chance. 16-year-old Robert Thomas. He tried to center the puck. It'll come back to the blue line. Kept in by London. Crawley's long shot. That got through to the net. It's stopped by Marchand. Jones is knocked down right on the doorstep. He was in there searching for a rebound that didn't exist. How about Dale Hunter having a hunch and going with 16-year-old Robert Thomas out there with Jones and Cliff Pooh. And it ends up being a decent shot on goal. You can see whacking at it as Jones in front of the net tried to draw a penalty by falling to the ice, but the officials weren't buying it there. Here comes the Dvorak line with Marner and Kitschak. That's not a surprise to the Huskies. They know they'll get a full dose of these guys. 
London needs offense. These guys can bring it. That was cleared out by the Huskies, but right into their own bench. So this faceoff will be deep again in their own end. And we'll see a whole lot of this line with Marner, Kachuk, Dvorak out there, especially Dvorak with his faceoff winning abilities for the London Knights. Came in at over 52% in the tournament. Dvorak gets it over to Kachuk. He goes to the corner, trying to keep Naboo away from it. Here's Mente. That shot didn't get through. Well, the Knights might be caught. Baudin has put on with him. Baudin's pass. Got down in front of the net. Perron tried to swipe at it, but he didn't get any good wood on it. At center ice, it's Kachuk. He's by himself, working one on two. Controlling the puck. Now here come the friends on the Knights. Marner in the middle of the ice couldn't shoot. And Francis Perron moves it ahead to a spot where Timo Meyer can track it down. Perron in, but he lifted it too high. A great play by Perron and Meyer, but they couldn't finish it. Under four and a half to go in the third. Knights are offside. Four minutes and 26 seconds on the clock. The Huskies lead by one in the championship game. It was almost two. Here is the insurance play of the game. It's brought to you by your local insurance broker. Get a broker on your side because your best insurance is an insurance broker. Alexander Fortin works with Natalie Olivier in power skating during the offseason. Then it really paid off here. He comes in with a ton of speed. Leaves it for Julian Nantel with the finish. Fortin protecting the puck of the backhand. Picture perfect pass in front of the net to give the Huskies a 2-1 lead. Faceoff is in the ninth end. Dvorak's out to take it against Julian Nantel. Nantel has the go-ahead goal for Ruan Noranda. Faceoff winds up on the sticks of the Knights. Max Jones moves it into the Huskies end. He gets knocked down by Lozon. Now barreling down to the corner of Jones. For a shot, but Dvorak scores! Knights have tied it! Wow, and the fans just loving great hockey here. We got a tie game late. Jones takes the beating. He's looking for a penalty as Lozon finishes him off, but that actually pulls Lozon out of the play. And so the Knights go into the fourth check. Marisha does a good job eliminating Briard. It ends up back in a step. A depth backhand pass to Christian Dvorak. Dvorak just hanging around. He knows to go to the net. He's got a stick on the ice. It's on and off the tape in a hurry. And the Knights tie it up late. That is not the guy you want to leave alone. Seventh goal of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. 52 goals in his OHL season. That was more than anyone else in the league. And he's tied it. What a battle this has been. Knights failed for the first time in nearly three weeks. But they found a way to tie things up. Now there's under four minutes to go on the clock. 2-2. Championship game of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. That's an icing. Well, you got to love it, RJ. I mean, you heard earlier when Nantel scored, the crowd was on its feet. He'd love it. It was 2-1. <laughs> the Knights come back. They're on their feet again. Interesting when you have an impartial crowd because there's no Red Deer Rebels. There's no Brandon Wheat Kings. It's an OHL team against a Quebec Major Junior Hockey League team, and the fans just loving their hockey here tonight. Pack house at the end, Max Sentrin. It's been a great game. Come on. His shot gets through to Parsons, and he was able to hold on to that one. Good job off the draw. Caron spreads wide, and any shot is a good shot at this juncture of the game. And you can see a excellent work off the faceoff. The lane opens up. Caron is there, and Parsons tracks it perfectly. Really comfortable with pucks in the middle of his body. Bodan on the faceoff against Owen McDonald. The puck sat there, and Meyer came in. He got a great scoring chance. Parsons stopped him, too. Well, Timo Meyer has had a boatload of chances. A couple of them have missed the net, but this one did not. And again, off the draw, he just swoops in. The puck sitting there on a platter. He could fire. Another faceoff win. This time it's Nabu with a chance. That's wide of the net. Mantel centering it. Bouncing around. Knights have it now. Marner works his way to center. Dumps it in. First man back will be Perron. 
He had to be careful. Those Knights were back there, both the Borak and Marner. He got the puck out of there. Now the Huskies have it into the Knights. Nobody on Waves. Meyer, he's slow to get up. He's tangled up with Crowley. But it's Kachuk who has it in the Huskies here. Marner. Oh, he tried to saucer it across to Kachuk, and Marchand stuck out the glove and caught it. And you know what? That was a great play because we've seen what Kachuk can do with pucks that are raised in the air. He scored London's first goal in that same vein. Mitch Marner picks it up. He says, I know this guy's pretty good with his stick. Maybe I'll get it across to him. And you know what? It would have landed in a picture perfect spot if Marchand didn't take that pass away. Huskies win this face off. There's Nicola Brouillard. He's able to get to center ice. Slaps this one away. Fontaine, he's balled in there. He's got control for the Huskies. Fontaine back to the corner. Mete trying to stay with him and didn't let him get to the net. Mete gets knocked down. It's Greer behind the goal. Yo Levy knocked it away from him. Now Cliff Poo's trying to contain Greer. Fontaine gets in there too. It's a big line that's fast for Rowan Miranda and strong, tough to contain. And the Knights had their hands full in. Goes on. He tried to make a pass to get it to one of his teammates, but it was off a glove and play is stopped. Two minutes, 23 seconds to go on the clock. The Rowan Miranda Huskies in London, Knights in the championship game. Knights scored first, but 15 seconds after that, Francis Perron tied it up. And then the Huskies got a lead in the third period thanks to Julian Mantel who just took that face off. But the Knights tied it thanks to Christian Dvorak. Big players coming through in a big game. And now there's just over two minutes to go. It's tied. Anything now might be good enough for the win. Wake it down in his own zone. Gathers up the puck and hits behind his own net. Lots of room to make a play. Come on. He spots for Tank. He socks his sends it in deep. Wanted Mantel to get there, but Crowley scores. Picking it. He brings it up to the Knights end. Yankovic pokes it past Caron, gets knocked down. That's picked up by the Huskies now. It's Wake it again. He lost it to Picking it. Yankovic trying to go wide. Drops it back. Crowley gets knocked down. Still able to make a pass down low to Yankovic. He's trying to use that big body to get loose, but Caron didn't let him. Fortan will be by himself. Three knights are back. Got it in deep. He's tired. Crowley's behind his own net. Not a lot of time to go in the third period. MasterCard Memorial Cup Championship. Here's the Borak skating well. It gets to the foot of the net, but he couldn't pull the trigger. Now we're into the stage where... You gotta be careful. Maybe if there's a chance, you can end this one. Under a minute to go. Marchand leaves it behind his net. Navo gives it away to the ball and passes in front. Marner put it off the crossbar. And the puck went way up in the air. Huskies have it to center. Oh wow, what a chance. Meyer almost got one right back. Meyer tried to center it. Hurrah! He can't shoot. Matthew Kitchak takes a look over his shoulder. Goes the long way so that Marner can catch up. Knights are on side. Now down to the corner. Goes on, steps in front of Kitchak. They continue to battle for the puck. It's center. Marner waits. And that's blocked. Two Huskies diving in front of us. Naboo and Meyer both got there and didn't let Marner get that shot through. Oh, man. The chance is late. Oh, puck management will drive a coach crazy, but especially at this juncture in the game, the hood just throws it out, couldn't put it on the tape better to Dvorak, and the shot goes off the crossbar by Marner. Look at this. Look at the look he has. Everyone's diving, darting, and they make a good block on that particular occasion. Marner foiled twice. Face off, controlled by the Knights. They're just trying to get this out, and they will, and that will be it. Huskies back off with the puck in 60 minutes. Not enough time to decide who's going to win the 98th MasterCard Memorial Cup.
Well, you got to love it. We came into this game and everyone felt that the London Knights were the heavy favorite, but the Ruan Miranda Huskies have left it all out there, tied at two. Can't wait for OT. Here we go again. Overtime in the championship game of the MasterCard Memorial Cup. The Knights and the Huskies. What a game it's been and what a finish it's going to be, Jeff. Oh boy, RJ Broadhead for the <laughs> second year in a row. We have overtime in the MasterCard Memorial Cup final last year. As RJ mentioned during the period, Anthony Sorelli of the Oshawa Generals ended it. They beat the Kelowna Rockets. London themselves, no stranger to overtime finals against a team from the Q2012 in Schwinnigan and Tonsloben with the overtime heroics. Eric Colby Armstrong, Todd Warner, and Damian Cox. You got an interesting text from a CHL alumni yeah, a second CHL ago. CHL alumni, a Sidney Crosby text me says, Junior hockey is pretty fun to watch. Eh? Yeah. How Canadian is that? Did he yeah. add A at the end? Yeah, he, did. Yeah, he did. Okay. <laughs> Westwood, well, and he was in this as well. They lost to uh, sure. Ramuski did in 2005 to the London Knights. You know, J.C. Tremblay, famous oh, hockey player, was always nice. one who would lob the puck. He was the flip master, and this is sort a of a, a tribute game to J.C. Tremblay in some ways. Well, and our good friend Donald S. Cherry talks about this on a lot of Saturday nights, the advantage of the flip shot and or the flip pass. You saw London do it um, or in this game. Here's Chris and Dvorak, the flip shot. It's almost like a set play because Kachuk and oh, Marner headed nice down one. the ice. And it ends up with Marner putting the puck in front and Kachuk tipping it in. So Ryan Miranda, when necessary, says, well, you know what? We've got that play <laughs> in our playbook, too. <laughs> now watch this. Jeremy Lozon oh, all nice. the way down the ice. But this one's even better because it's 4-10 with speed. And he cuts around the net, and that's a pretty goal to not tell to put them ahead 2-1. So both teams uh, are saying whatever you can do, we can do just as well. <laughs> Tit for tat. Good for the goose, good for the gander. Uh, Kobe Armstrong, Huskies came out in this third period aggressive. Yeah, they came out and they came out strong. And, and you know, we showed early in the game them getting pucks in behind and really dictating play that way. But they, they worked it with their speed, and they're almost robotic in their system with the way they've been playing as a group. Uh, coming at you, coming at you. Dale Hunter forced to call a timeout early in the third. But they just kept putting the pressure, eventually getting up by a goal and making it hard for the London Knights to chase the game. So uh, you talk about ski, uh, speed, uh, skill by the Huskies and, and hard work. And look at this play as Damian just showed. But man, were they, they came out, they came out hard. And, and we haven't seen the Huskies been put under pressure like that. You know what, Kobe, further to that point, the London. We, talked about, we talked about this in the last intermission. As the game goes on, when you're the quote-unquote underdog team, even though they're the number one ranked team in the CHL, you could feel the confidence growing, Todd. We saw that all, all tournament long, For and sure. we saw it all game long so far. For sure. They dealt with adversity early in the week, and we kept asking Jill Bouchard about the penalties and the discipline, and he kept sticking by his team. I love the way he did that. And you can see after the first period tonight, you know, they growing confidence London's not getting the opportunities they they wanted and one look one look I wanted to show was the power play and why want London would change that power play it always cues off Marner tonight they switched it they went back to it in the third and it pays off for a goal so here he is off the half wall he, this is the centers off Marner great passing skills he, he finds lanes through the seams down low to the blue line and tonight he was playing his offside and Dvorak was working in that spot so unusual for me why they would change but tonight they went back to it in the third and, and it pays off with a couple big goals so um, London's power play was something we talked about an awful lot. Marner being the key piece to that. Now he's back at his position, and it paid off. They got momentum from it. You know, I can't remember a better MasterCard Memorial Cup final game that had more oohs and odds. Whether it was Francis Perron sailing yes. one over the net, or Mitch uh, Marner with under a minute left hitting the crossbar. Yeah. This one has had a little bit of everything. I mean, we're all on edge here, and it's 7,000 people in the building. This one has a little bit of everything, Colby. And we go to overtime. I played in overtime, but, you know, you talk about, Damien talked about goaltending. Yeah. Man, has there been some unbelievable yeah. saves right now tonight in this game. So, a uh, little bit of everything, and we're on the edge of our seat. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we'll take our first break here. Here in the intermission in overtime, we will have a new MasterCard Memorial Cup champion crowned hopefully soon. But the way this one's going, who knows? Sportsnet Central update with Martine in moments. Overtime, tied to twos. Trying to work it out in front. Here's a chance. Matt Celtic scores! It's over! On his leg, Smith is out in front. Smith, big away! Swings it behind the net, in front, scores! And Todd Sullivan, the Shawinigan Cataracts are champions. Made a play to Carlisle, that gets the reversal, that's a goal! The Oshawa Generals are Memorial Cup champions! And those are...
are the MasterCard Memorial Cup overtime game-winning goals as seen on Sportsnet going back to 1999. And that's what it's all about. The trophy just outside the referee's room, the MasterCard Memorial Cup, the 98th edition of it. RJ and Sam, we know the final score will be 3-2. We just don't know who's going to get the three. It'll be fun to find out, though. One goal. Who's going to get it? and win the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Knights have won the championship. That was back in 2005. The Rouen Noranda Huskies are here for the first time in their 20-year history. They won the President Cup QMJHL championship, and now here they are, just a goal away from maybe a bigger prize. Uh, pretty awesome. You look at the Huskies. I mean, the number one ranked team in the CHL, 14 wins to end the regular season. Then they get through some tough competition in Moncton in round three, Shawinigan in five games to win the President Cup. And how about the London Knights? After winning a six-game series against Owen Sound in the opening round, they have yet to lose a hockey game. And against Kitchener, perennial ranked team. Erie, a perennial ranked team in the top ten. And the game Niagara Ice Dogs team in a sweep for the OHL title. Well, these, both of these teams coming in hot in this uh, the way it's been played this afternoon, tonight, it's uh, definitely deserved to be here in overtime. And no problem for the Knights in the round robin either. They outscored their opposition 20-5, to going 3-0. Different story here in the final. Knights haven't lost since April the 1st. Oh, and Miranda Huskies, number one ranked team. Let's see who wins this one. We're underway in overtime. Graves banks it out to center. Marner's out there to start. Huskies were on the wrong side of the Knights blue line. They're offside early on in overtime. Well, interesting how things got started with the top guys that getting goals. You look at the Mar Marner, Dvorak, Kachuk line, and then Perron answers on a Meyer assist. That really set the tone for this game because you knew the top guys were going to be engaged, and they've been excellent, as two have been the goalies. Top line of the Knights on the ice now. Antoine Wakeman has been terrific for the Huskies. He was in there trying to make things difficult. The ball act on his backhand. Lifts it up high, gets it into the Huskies' end. Marchand plays it. That's read by Marner. He gets it back to the blue line. Ole Olevi waits. Now he's got time. Snaps a shot. It's loose. It's off the post. Kachuk, what a great chance. And the Huskies come right back the other way. That shot is blocked. Getting it right back is 410. Pass it in front of the net. It's loose. Huskies looking for it. Knights are first to it. Graves banks it out. Couple of chances in both ends. Marner's still on the ice. And here he comes. Decides to dump it in. He knew where that puck was going. He's right over there now. Goes on. Shovels it out to center. Knights get it right back in. Here's Alan Carroll. Here's Jeremy. L tries the bank pass. Meyer up to Francis Perron. Along with the MVP in the regular season and the playoffs in the QMJHL. Has a goal in this game. Timo Meyer chases after this one in the corner. Drops it off there and Perron, the captain, leaves it for Bodin. John Christophe Bodin doesn't have a point at the MasterCard Memorial Cup yet. But he was one of the top scorers in the QMJHL. He's playing with an injury. He's out there with two of the best players on the Huskies. Here's Lozar at the blue line. Waits, shoots. That missed. Timo Meyer gets it back in front. This will get to the blue line, but not out. Perron able to keep it in. Now he's trying to get to the middle of the ice. That shot is stopped. The rebound. Parsons, a great save. He robbed Timo Meyer. Oh, how about it? Both goalies outstanding here in the extra time. Jacob Graves comes back, but now A.J. Greer is right tight with him. Graves comes out of the corner with a puck. The overage defenseman up to center ice. Navu backs off. That pass gets Spicer, Cowles, and Fontaine. And it's icing. Well, both goaltenders have been excellent. Tyler Parsons for the London Knights. Chase Marchand for the Ruin Miranda Huskies. They'll get a kick that left skate just at the last second. Goes off the post. Good chuck in the blue paint. And then Perron down there. Meyer with a chance. And somehow Parsons in the splits doesn't give way. And we're still tied. Top 
the face off. Huskies get it out of their end. Sir Cowles, quick move. Now it's up the middle to Greer. He's stick handling around, but Gray's not going to win. Sir Cowles gets it behind the load in net. And Joe Levy won that gold medal with Finland at the World Junior Hockey Championship. Joe Levy had that one get past him. Huskies are tired, so there's some time here for the Knights. Pass up to center ice. Aaron Barisha, the overages, slaps it in. He had 45 goals in the regular season. Fifth in the OHL in goals. Fancies it behind the net. Here's Max Jones to Barisha. He tried to put it in short side. You can hear it hit the post. Brandon Crowley, he passes across. The Borak was open, but he couldn't take the pass. Jones waits and shoots. That was deflected wide. Mete was flying around down there. Huskies, now it's their turn to be on their heels. But they get it out and might get a chance now. For Tan, long shot. That miss. That will come all the way out in front of the Huskies bench. They have to be careful. They were in the middle of a change. Here's Marner. He shoots. There's a save. It's loose. Another stop by Marche. He stopped Kachuk again. Fortan skating all over the place. Here he comes again. Into the middle of the ice. Fortan from his knees tried to shot. And Graves finally took it away. Graves wants to slow things down a bit. Well, there's no time for that. Huskies right in his face. Didn't get the puck out very much. And now it's not out again. Kept in by Bodin. Marner's there. He makes sure he gets it off first. Kachuk might get another chance. That shot. Came right off the end board. Tarshan was so far out of his net. It actually went between him and the post. But it came out and the Huskies got it up. Right back in. Marner, middle of the ice. Marner's shot. McDonald had it bounce on him. He took a swipe at it. Couldn't make contact. And now it's Francis Perron for the Huskies. It's their turn to try to end this and capture the championship. Timo Meyer picks up the loose puck. Oh, there, a shot, and he got all of it. Parsons did, too. Owen McDonald hasn't scored at this MasterCard Memorial Cup. Can't beat around Gabriel Fontaine. Sir Cowles to Fontaine. In over the line. He slapped at it. He was blocked by Mente. Nice. Three of them, but picking it can't come up with the puck, and he put himself offside. Oh, man, Mitch Marner had a golden opportunity at the end of regulation. It went off the crossbar, and he gets another golden opportunity in tight. Takes it in the feet, has it in perfect position, but a great blocker save by Marchand. And then Kachuk gets an opportunity. He's got a little lead time slap shot. He fans on it. And good thing Marchand recovered quickly because he was in position where he could have knocked it back into his own net. Played just over five minutes of overtime. No shortage of chances. Crowley stumbled back to his feet now. Mente has the pack and he gives it to Brandon Crowley, native of New Jersey, up to center ice. They're saying he didn't get to center. It's icing. Boy, it's uh, all about being a team. And sometimes you need a little help off the ice. You see Lozon's about to go over the boards and the puck comes there and they say, no, no, get back here, get back here. <laughs> get back at the bench. And they saved him from the too many men on the ice penalty. And he's all smiles now because he didn't take it. Gutsy effort here for Ruan Miranda. Philip Myers hasn't played since that knee on knee hit with Owen McDonald. And he is a key minute eater and a great defensive piece for the Huskies. This face off, won by the Huskies. Mantel snaps a shot. And caught Parsons up high. Rebound, doesn't get out. Here's Fortin. Boy, he's been skating well. He'll circle the net this time. Looks in front. There's some Huskies there. Knights had them all covered, so he went to the corner. Mantel shot. That's stopped by Parsons. Graves banks it off the board to himself, but it's not out. Here we are. Back down to Wakeham. Graves bumps with him. Fortin's behind the net. And he's setting up shot back there. There's a good pass. Mantel put it off the other side of the post. Julian Mantel, the Avalanche prospect, knocked down. Horatio advances the puck, and Max Jones is going to go to work. He's one on two. Bouillard, the veteran defenseman, stayed in front of him all the way, and Jones finally just tried to center it. And back is Fortan. He's still got a little gas in the tank. How about that? He skated a lot on this ship. Middle of the ice, four yards shot. That one's blocked. Now Mete right away looking up. Who's open for the Knights? No, no. That gets past a couple of them. It won't be icing though. Here's 
as the speedy Francis Perron made a nice move. Now he's got it in the night end. Passed in front to Meyer. And when he tried to shoot, the Knights were there to knock it out of play. Wow, great battle between the number one team in the Canadian Hockey League, the Rouen Naranda Huskies. The London Knights finished third in the final ranking. So you've got one against three. Quebec Major Junior Hockey League against the Ontario Hockey League. An engaged NMAX century and with really no team to cheer for. What you'd think would be an impartial group has cheered for excellent hockey and they've been treated to a dynamite game. Face off to the right of Tyler Parsons. Shots nearly even. The score is even. Off the face off, it's Fontaine. Takes it to the corner. He has been difficult to take the puck from, but Owen McDonald accomplished it. Banks it off the glass. Now it's a foot race. Lozon's going to have to hurry. Jakimovic was making up some ground. Pekovic leaves it for Yolevi, who just slides it back in the Huskies. Hit. Here's the defensive defenseman of the year in the QMJHL, Alan Perron. Jeremy Lozon, second round pick of the Bruins. Huskies are just wanting to set things up. Banked off the board, out to center. Greer with that bouncing puck advanced it to Zerkals. Knights broke it up. Standing his ground at center. Jeremy Lozon not letting the Knights get past him. And then the puck comes loose. Here's Nicola Bouillard. Saucers it over to the left wing side. Fontaine down to the corner. Joe Levy will be the first man to it. Calmly moves it to Aiden Jameson. Jameson's from Lindsay, Ontario. There's a pass. It's a good one. Kachuk. Wait, shoots. Scores. It's over. Good Knights. The Memorial Cup bell belongs to the London Knights. The hottest team in hockey have won 17 in a row, and that's good enough to call themselves Master Card Memorial Cup champs. What a game. Far down. A fantastic effort. And both sides should be extremely happy with the way they played this game. Their Huskies left it all out there, did everything they could possibly do for the first time all tournament long, forced the London Knights into trailing in the game. And the Knights just got a persistent effort. Their top guys were their top guys at the end of the day. And Matthew Kachuk, how about that? Isn't that something else? It was a big game. We all knew that. The championship was on the line, and both teams had their best players shine. Matthew Kachuk, he had a lot of chances in overtime and finally buried it. 3-2, nice win in overtime, 7 minutes 49 seconds in, and here it is. Well, Aiden Jamison with the great pass to Kachuk, who comes down the wing. Now, the boot got him in a good spot, but it's the curl and drive that opens up the lane and creates a screen for Marchand. Never mind the fact that it is a rocket. Far down, curl, drag, far down, good night. It's over. What a shot. Matthew Kachuk working with the high ankle sprain has been hobbled since the OHL championship. Comes back, takes the pass from Jameson, and ends it. The Knights have their second title in their history. Last one back in 2005, and now 2016 is another special season for the Knights organization. Here's Rob Falls. With the man who ended it, Matt Kachuk, tell me about that final shot to give yourself the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Yeah, I actually don't know. I don't know if I was credited with it or not, but it might have hit off uh, Christian Dvorak. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's something that, uh, you know, this is probably this is the best part. Of, this is the best feeling I've ever had. Right you guys never stopped working. From April 1st on, you never lost another game. The work ethic was always there. Yeah, um, you know, it's everybody 